Welcome to episode 206 of the Reptile Gumbo podcast. How's it going? It's going. So we had a guest <laughs> lined up for tonight. They got ill. They will be on next week. So uh, this next week or two weeks? Next week. The 27th is not I understand that they oh, will be okay. on next week. I was just checking. You had asked me about the 27th. That's for a different guest. Gotcha. The person that schedules the guests knows when they come on. Okay. That's me. Do you want to do our intro stuff? I don't have anything. What? What, what are you talking about? You Why? have it all. Why don't you have it? Because you have it all. But you're the one that's got to say it. Then give it to me. Hold on. I can't say anything if Talk you don't so give it yourself. to me. There you go. Lil's Shop of Horrors is a small feeder and pet supplies business based in San Antonio, and they regularly schedule feeder meetups around the San Antonio as well as other neighboring towns and cities. They offer shipping on their feeder insects, isopods, and are working on starting shipping on their feeder rodents, too. All feeders are raised on a nutritional diet that optimizes the health of the reptiles and amphibians that consume them. And Lewis is there in the chat. Awesome. Yes, check out Lil's Shops of Horrors. Uh, Lil's, Lil's Shop of Horrors will be doing uh, shipping soon, so keep your eyes open for that. We'll also be posting it. Uh, we'll be posting stuff about that soon when it happens. But when it does, make sure you get your rodents from Lewis. You're ready. Uh, let's do uh, herps because we got we have a herps. We have a show coming up. So herps, uh, Rosenberg, Texas show, which is a weird name. If you don't know where Rosenberg is, it is South. West Houston, basically. So uh, just south of Sugarland Houston, which is southwest Houston. Uh, that is going to be like 30 minutes from us. We will be there. Katie will be there with our daughter Joe selling cookies. Girls got cookies. Go buy your cookies because I don't want to bring any home that weekend. Mm -mm. Uh, we'll have a table there for the podcast. We'll try to get a couple of interviews in that weekend so that we can can those and save those for a week where we don't want to do a show. That's how those come into play. Uh, so go check out the Rosenberg show. That is March 16th and 17th. Then Slidell, Louisiana, April 6th, April 7th. Austin, Texas, April 20th, April 21st. West Monroe, Louisiana, May 4th, May 5th. Then over to Conroe for the Summer Conroe Show, June 8th and June 9th. That is the weekend for Katie's birthday. One of our birthdays always falls near Conroe weekend. Mm -hmm. That is your birthday weekend. I'll be working Sunday. So if you see her at that Conroe Saturday, show. Saturday, I won't be there till like 2 o'clock that afternoon. I'll be there. Yeah. I will be there. Uh, Longview, Texas is June 22nd, 23rd. Back over to Slidell, July 20th, mm -hmm. 21st. Let me see if we can make that or not. Well, no, I think I'll be no, out of town. You'll be out of town. I'll be in the mountains of Tennessee. Yep. I'm looking forward to that trip. Uh, and then Sulphur, Louisiana. That is what used to be the Lake Charles show. And it's still basically Lake Charles. It's like one exit west of Lake Charles. But Sulphur, Louisiana is July 27th, 28th. Uh, there was a venue change for that. I don't actually know. I didn't get the story behind it, but it's right off of I-10, so it'll be pretty easy to find. Oh, Katie, how's it going? It's going pretty good. It's spring break, man. It I've slept break. more in the last three days than I think I have in the last three months, minus the week that I was sick, which is nice. Our uh, our newts are doing well. Our baby newts. Yeah, we can talk about that in a little bit, though. What, what, I can talk about it right now. We can talk about it in a little bit, though. Why in a little bit? Just we'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay. So we're talking about that in a little bit. Oh. Who knows? We may have a caller that wants to call in and we'll talk see. about newts. Oh, we got a phone. I don't know how she can do that. Uh, I got this gift for anybody that's watching. This is a uh, Squishmallow Gila Monster. This is the closest I can get to a Gila Monster right now because <laughs> I can't legally own them where we live. We'll own a Gila Monster. We had planned on buying you one of those for your birthday back in June. It's got and a tail. Then when we went back to the store... To get them, they had put all of them away and put all the Valentine's ones out. This is a Valentine's uh, one. Well, apparently people didn't think. Valentine's that. is all about love, and I would love a Gila monster. Well. So, anybody wants to go find check out Squishmallow, you can get this, or you can get the bigger one. They make a bigger one for anybody that can't legally own a Gila monster right now. Uh, we got to do a giveaway soon. We have some giveaway stuff piled up over there. We do have a, quite a bit of giveaway stuff. It's the 12th, but we can go ahead and do a giveaway for the rest of this month. Sure. We can do the Lego. That works. Hold on one second. Let me grab it. Talk amongst yourselves. Go, okay. Katie. Well, I think Joe put this Lego together for me. I saw it on. It was at a store. It was on sale. And so I bought the last two they had. I liked it because it has a little sea turtle in it. It kind of looks like Squirt from Finding Nemo. Yeah, it's a three-in-one. If you're looking uh, at the screen, if not, we'll post a picture of it. But but it's, yeah. I mean, the dolphin's cute. 
But it's and a sea the turtle. seahorse is cute, but I wanted the sea turtle. One. So it's a three in one. So, so the, the first set that we built, the one that our daughter built, and we'll take a picture of and post it, is the uh, dolphin, coral reef, a crab, and a sea turtle. Then you can also do uh, take it apart and do a, a seahorse, and it looks like a snail, a sea snail. Yeah. And then you could also do uh, a shark. That's a shark. Is that what that's supposed to be? I wasn't really sure what that's supposed to be. bluefin tuna? I got nothing. For, what, for whatever reason, when they do these three-in-ones, they like to do one where you're literally questioning everything what, what it is? Yeah. in the build. But that'll be our giveaway for the rest of this that's month. So we'll do a, cute. we'll figure out some sort of post, and we'll uh, tag it over on our Facebook page, and you could win. I mean, anybody Lego. can do Lego. It's not just a game. By the way, it is Lego. I know we're going to sound... Uh, like jerks, it's Lego, not Lego. You're gonna sound like a jerk. No, 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 it's. I don't correct people. It's like a uh, poisonous venomous. We correct reptile people do that. No, all the time. That I correct. It's Lego, not Legos. It's Lego bricks, Lego sets. Lego is the brand name. But Lego is. What's well, because we, we don't say plural. Kleenexes. I guess some people do, but they're wrong. Because it's Kleenex. It's just the. It's the brand. Yeah, it's one of those weird. And things. if you're going to buy multiple. Sets of Lego. Uh, Darren, we don't have basements it, in South Texas. No, we don't. Uh, it would flood because, you know, we live in the South. We, we don't do basements. If we did, that would be but a But he does place. not have a Chinese alligator in the basement. Yet. Uh, but it's funny. Certain products become known as the general name for that product. It's like Walmart. There's one Walmart. Even if you have to yeah, go to multiples that's, in a day. That's a different it's question. not Walmart. That's a different situ situation. That's putting S's on the end of things. Like Walmart's, Kmart's, Targets. Although I do say Kroger's, and it's Kroger. It's just Kroger. It is. I know you say Kroger's, and I say Kroger's. Do I? Yes. Oh. It's just Kroger. But no, I'm talking about like Kleenex, right? If someone needs something to blow their nose, they're asking for a Kleenex. But that's not what that is, right? That's a facial tissue. But we go by the brand name Kleenex. Uh, if there's a, a plastic building block set, we call them Lego, even though... It may not one. be Lego. Uh, if you're in the South and it's a soda, we call it a Coke. And then you figure out what flavor Coke you want. Hey, I want a Coke. Okay, what type? A Sprite. So you know, it's, <laughs> it's just how it is. So there's certain things that the, the, the product is so well known, it becomes known as the common name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyways. So yeah, we had a guest tonight. Not here. We're going to do some call-ins. I will put the number on the bottom of the screen shortly. Uh, I think what we'll do first, though, is we will do our, uh, um, what was I going to say? Sorry, I'm trying I to do three things. I didn't know what you were yeah. trying to do. We're going to do our uh, Facebook page first. Yeah, we didn't do it last week. Oh, we did not? So, so the, we've actually got like oh, two let weeks me, worth of stuff to let me no, Yeah, we did. Remember we saw the big ass bullfrog tadpole that didn't turn into a frog? And it was still a tadpole? See the picture here? Oh, no, no, no. It was the week before that. Yeah. Last week I was sick. I had the stomach bug last time. That's right. My dad was here. Because Sam was here. That's right. So uh, let's go through that. And that way, if any of our people that want to call in, want to talk about anything that's on the Facebook page, yeah. we can do that. Because again, we're going to call ins later and it can be anything you want within reason. Within reason. Within if reason. I feel that like it's not reasonable or an appropriate conversation, I will hang up on you. I have the phone. But still, I can you know, do it. I will reach. And let's, do it. Uh, let's go ahead and share the screen and see what got posted over on our discussion page. Uh, this first one is a neat video of a non-venomous water snake next to a venomous cottonmouth. I I really like that this was posted because with it warming up, it's you're going to see these out. And everybody, when they see a snake out in the wild, it's automatically one of the venomous. And it's not necessarily venomous. Now, I will say with Nathan, says, dang, no wonder people that aren't reptile yeah. folks mix them up. It, it Look, I get it. I do get it. If I were to see both of those in the wild, I couldn't tell you which was but, which unless they opened their mouth. But I've also seen some very non-cottonmouth looking snakes called a cottonmouth. Like I've seen people misidentify garter snakes as a cottonmouth. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm I mean, Lord, I'm I message you and Robert all the time. Hey, what's this? Because I don't know what it is. Yeah. But this is a very this is very I, it's the, tricky. The problem is some of the uh the the tails are like the uh, lines that go through the uh, pattern that goes through the eye on these guys, but you'd have to be pretty close to see that. Again, I ain't getting close enough. Just tell general people, don't go near it. You don't, you, you don't get bit by it if you leave it alone. Yes. Oh, I shared this. This is uh, Max's yearly posting of his trip to uh, the Rattlesnake Roundup uh, in Stillwater. Stillwater? I think it's Stillwater. Sweetwater. Not Stillwater. Sweetwater. Um, 
for those that don't understand a rattlesnake roundup and hearing this for the first time, if you're a, a reptile person, especially a snake person, just imagine a nightmare. Uh, they collect hundreds of rattlesnakes. And we actually had someone post, do they collect them uh, for population control or for selling the meat? For this, that? They, they collect them to kill them. And they can tell you it's population control they want. But they're just collecting random ones to kill them. And, and some of the things that I pointed out in the comment section are, are true and horrifying. Uh, like when they allow kids to finger paint with snake blood. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Oh, yeah. That's gross. Um, it's pretty messed up. So I, I suggest go over and watching Max. He did a great Max did a great video on okay, now I need to go watch on the Rattlesnake videos. Roundup when he went a few years ago. And uh it, it just even if you're not an animal person, watching it and seeing the things they do makes you have to go, what the fuck is wrong with people? So go check that out. Um, we don't exaggerate when we talk about how horrible it is. Uh this guy got famous on the internet lately. Uh this ALA reptiles, <laughs> not for the right reason. But he did breed a, um, what was it, a xanthic whatever monitor. You I don't, were telling me about I that. didn't pay attention to the species. It doesn't matter. Um, it's definitely got a misshapen face, so much so that it's kind of hard to tell where the mouth is on this yeah. thing. I So I, I'll be honest, I scrolled past this the last week. I haven't really done much. I, I had the stomach bug. It was the week before spring break. My kids were batshit crazy at school. Like it was, it was survival week is what it was. Um, but you were telling me that this this kind of so, blew up on this. So guy. it was on almost every reptile page, and he had it for sale on Morph Market for a short period of time for four thousand dollars. And apparently, it's exanthic, so it's much more expensive than four thousand dollars. But still, four thousand dollars is a lot for an animal that really either a should be cold, and people can get upset all that you want, but cold means killed. And and look, sometimes certain things need to be killed, or or and what would have been acceptable was given to somebody who would take it as a pet only, but selling it at four thousand dollars. Is not a pet only kind of price, right? That is a uh, if I'm buying something for four thousand dollars, I'm expecting to breed it. And you don't know a couple of things about this animal. It's a baby. You don't know if this is genetic. It may or may not be. You don't know any internal issues that may come from this down the road. So a four thousand dollar price tag on something that may die is ridiculous. And the guy really, really doubled down on it. Uh, all of his things are signed one hundred percent level up. I'm like, that's not leveling up. That's that's selling a, a misshapen animal for much more. Like I had a boa born this year with a kink on its back. It was a beautiful boa, awesome looking snake. Probably the prettiest one out of the entire class. I gave it to a friend as a pet. Yeah. I gave it away. Uh, it, I'm not going to keep it. I'm not going to breed it. And we gave it knowing, and, like having a conversation beforehand saying this will only be used for a pet. And I'm very iffy on, on selling or even breeding animals that have issues. Like, so I had a, a sun glow boa born a few years back. We named him Bugsy because he had these big bug. Uh, bugged out eyes and didn't look right. They have since uh, shrank back down to normal eye size, but I was not going to breed them. But after talking to several people, including our buddy Travis, some others, understanding the genetics of it, it's not so much a genetic issue with that snake. That is a genetic thing that could pop up with pretty much any albino. Though. We've talked about it on here before when, when you have genes that get rid of melanin, whether it's albino in there or the uh, the palmetto corn snakes, those white confetti looking yes. corn snakes, like mm -hmm. they, they get the bug eyes. Uh, leucistic rat snakes will get bug eyes. Um, that's not so much a genetic thing as they will pass that on as in that gene for removing the color causes the bug eyes in some individuals. And so I, I, I did. I bred him this year. He's actually breeding to a female right now um, because I'm not worried about that gene for the bug eyes passing on as much as I know that that any time I breed albino, it's a possibility. So, but again, I didn't try and sell that snake for $4,000. Another really pretty one too. Speaking of breeding. This one right here from our friend over at Megan Conda. Megan produced baby albino green anacondas, and this thing is amazing looking. Now, it's great, but I kind of sit on the same fence as with like uh, all the other large snake morphs. They're producing a lot of babies at one time. What happens to all these babies? So, like, it's a great looking snake. I just, I worry down the line how many people are going to get big snakes and then. Things happen. It happens with retakes. I worry about all the time. All these snakes being produced and sold. I'm curious, and I, I really, we should, I should ask our friends at DNT Reptiles because he could, he DNT could tell retakes. me retakes. Um, how many do they hold? Like Paul, what do you mean? So Paul breeds ball pythons. Yes. And you breed boas. Yes. Like I know how many you hold back. What do you mean hold back? But like, how many are you keeping from a litter like that? To Based on, I mean, I guess it's, it depends on future projects. And the problem is you're talking about and some of these big snakes having 30, 40 babies at a time, 30, 40 eggs at a time, just to get, <clears throat> depending on which breeding, just to get one or two possible snakes out of there. And then what do you do with the other 
30, right? You don't see a lot of big retics on Facebook. And that may be a couple of things. Look, some people may not be on social media with their animals, and that's fine. But you got to believe that a lot of these big animals, something's happening to it. Like, they're not making it. Uh, but I would like to see more done with this albino. She does have the, uh, I believe, the, the annery ones also. Yeah. So I'd, snow anacondas is coming at some point. I'm just looking forward to that. I mean, I know how you choose your holdbacks. It depends on what you're, what you're going for. What you're going for. Yeah. Which I is, imagine that's the same with everybody. Which is why I try to do as little hits as possible. I try not to, I don't try not to do any possible hits if I can. Uh, because I want to make sure that I get the most possible uh, positive outcomes from the breeding mm -hmm. and not a lot of animals that I'm going to have to find homes for. Uh, I'm with Lewis, though. I, I do want to see snow green anacondas. I just, this, this albino one's amazing, and I'd like to see snow green anacondas. Uh, this is an interesting one. Erica McVeigh posted of this guy and his son uh, removing a snake. Watching the son learn how to use a yeah, it was kind of a cool um, box. If you look, it's a toolbox with a little um, like pipe, a closeout pipe thing on the end of it. Is that Sam? Uh, it's probably Sam, it's a Facebook <laughs> user, I guess, or maybe Chris. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but it's kind of a cool thing. If you watch this thing, you, you get the snake to go into this toolbox, which latches shut. You can lock it shut, and then it's got this little closeout valve thing on the end of it. So once it's in, you can close it out. Kind of a cool homemade. Snake removal box. I thought it was kind of neat. I always like watching videos where people are learning how to do things, though. And the kid learning how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and what the problem is, someone, that knowledge. a non reptile person would see that and freak out when in reality, that, that snake is perfectly harmless. It's not, it's yeah. the best way to teach them. Uh, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. What is this? I have not read this. this is from Megan. The Toll of Texas Road. Oh, it's a, it's an, like an art exhibit that is. Oh, is it dead animals from the roads? Well, it, it I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's dead snakes, and dead it's, turtle. It's to kind of like bring your attention to just how much we're losing on the road every year. Oh, man. That's horrible. I mean, those are. But if you think pretty, about but... it, you've got these neighborhoods that are literally popping up overnight. And we've talked about it on here before. And it, it oh. you know, these houses are being built and the wildlife has nowhere to go. Some of the worst is when we go road cruising. Uh, Robert and I will go road cruising, we'll pass a spot. We'll come back 15 minutes later, and there's a dead snake there. A snake that was not there 15 minutes ago on our first pass. Um, that always sucks to see. This one you posted. Uh, falcons can live 12 to 15 years. All falcons alive today were born in the 21st century, and therefore they're all millennial falcons. It was funny. It was funny. So for Star Wars folks out there. Your dad said I'm never allowed to laugh at his jokes again. Uh, Nathan posted this. If anybody's interested in um, toys. Sure. Keep scrolling. <laughs> Just uh, some adult toys there. If you like snakes and adult toys. Um, <laughs> I saw this one's uh, me. I've wildlife should be left so alone. Many times. And see insect spiders or animals, and then you'll get. Yeah, I'm. I'm bad about. I'm, I'm bad about telling people leave things alone. And then if I see it, I'm. I'm gonna go pick it up. I can't help it. You didn't pick up the lizard on the porch the other day, though. I was super it's, proud of you. Much faster than me, and I'm not gonna try and catch it. Uh, this is a funny little one. Um, what is it? Is this? I don't know what kind of croc. That's salt water. That's not saltwater crocs. But yeah. But at the so time, I can't babies. tell what it was. It was so many babies. So many babies. It looked like some sort of caiman because it's or or dwarf croc. I don't know. But it's very small. And then uh, Jason Creek Moore posted this. I want to talk about uh, Australia and all the animals that want to kill you. And then forget about a, the plant. Here's a plant. A plant that wants to kill you. Oh no! Darren says the owl that escaped the New York Zoo ran into a building and died. No. I didn't see that. That's horrible. Speaking of zoos, I know everybody saw the video of the, the gorilla this week. Oh, uh, the Fort Worth, you told me about Fort it. Fort Worth Zoo. I didn't read on how it happened, but something happened in the lockout procedures. Two keepers got caught in the yard with a giant silverback. Uh, and there were customers there. They were videotaping. And it was, it was scary. The one keeper got to the door, stood at the door, held it open because the other keeper was on the other side of the yard. And the gorilla was between her and the door. And they had to wait for the gorilla kind of to move around, get preoccupied and they bolted for the door and both of them were safe but uh i just shit myself i, I would have had a heart attack gorilla the gorilla the exhibit gorilla wouldn't want to mess with me i just shit myself because the problem is you can't be like oh i will just jump the moat or climb this or climb that whatever you can climb he can, he can too climb so yeah. it's uh give, that video is i don't those keepers i don't know what happened from it i don't know how it happened i don't know the yeah what the accident how it occurred but scary as hell 
as someone who's been a reptile keeper, that is that is scary as hell. Um, so you want to do some call-ins? Sure. Let's try. Let's let's get my <coughs> setup here. Make sure it all is gonna work. Dun, dun, dun. My phone is on. You should mute me for a second. We'll we'll do her in a little bit. Okay. Um, go ahead and put the phone number across the bottom. Y'all like it? I came up with this one today. <laughs> it's a six six two. Four seven six two five three seven or six six two to the number four snakes six six two four snakes. Uh, give us a call. And we'll try and get you in. If you have anything you want to talk about tonight, we tested this out earlier and we used our daughter to help us. I will hope it works when you call. And um, she, we had to explain how the numbers had letters associated with them. Yeah, she was like, "What do you mean snakes?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, six six two. Snakes. She did know that in her defense. She just didn't realize what we were talking about. That number is from uh, is, is a Mississippi number. It was the only one I could find that would give me four snakes as a number. So where did I say it was from? It was uh, you told scuba. me. The thing is scuba, Mississippi. But uh, I don't even know where that is on a map. So It's in Mississippi. So have you been following, while we, we wait to see if anybody wants to call, have you been following the... U.S. Arc update. I actually have that pulled up. Do you? Okay. Because uh, it, it was a pretty good week. There's a ton of updates. It was a pretty good week. Uh, we've we've mentioned a lot of these things. Oh, we have have a number. It, it may be. It, let's see who it is. <laughs> it was Travis. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Oh, they're talking. Hold on. One second. My phone doesn't like. There we go. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. <laughs> Hi, Joe. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. This is our daughter. <laughs> she finally made it to the podcast. It only took uh, 206 hi. episodes. <laughs> so uh, she actually has something legit to talk about. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about the newts. The newts. Yeah. The newts we have. Our, our Spanish rib newts that we have. So one of the things that was discussed in our household was if we keep the newts and she does everything for them, then she can keep the money when they sell. Yes. If James has to help out with that situation or with anything that's them being taken care of, then they have then, to split the cost and unless money. he ends up doing it all, in which case he gets to keep the money. Yeah. So Joe, tell us a little bit about your day to day taking care of these newts. Okay. So Whenever I get home from school, the first thing I do is I, I do guess, whatever I need to hold do, on, Joe, and second. then I go. One second, Joe. I guess I should ask the listeners to make sure they can hear the phone call, because I'm not 100% sure. This is the first time we've done it. So but we could. Uh, we could earlier, but uh, if anybody listening right now in the chat can uh, could hear the phone call, just let us know so that we uh, know that this is working. This is the first time we've looked this up. I bought this nice board, and it does all this, and I haven't actually figured it out or tried it until today. Oh, good. They said they hear. Go ahead, Joe. Continue. Okay, so usually whenever I get home from school, I do whatever I need to do, and then I go check on the news. And I have a brine shrimp little like hatchery thing. I don't hatchery of setting on the whatever it's a rack. Holding we have, up the news. Yeah, we bought a rack. rack holding the news. Yeah, and I feed them, and then if I need to, I get more of the brine shrimp eggs and I make a new batch of brine shrimp. Yeah, how 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 long does it take to hatch eggs from eggs to brine shrimp? Um it usually takes twenty four hours and I occasionally I need to do it I need to uh not change the eggs like two days in a row. But usually I do have to change them after I feed the babies. Right. So our newts, they hatched. We moved them. Uh, how big would you say they are right now? What would you compare them to? Um, I would compare them to uh, the width of my thumbnail. Yeah, like a, a, a long a grain of rice. That's probably a good description. Yeah. They have little bee legs. They're so cute. <laughs> Which legs do they have now? Their front legs. Yes. They have the front legs. Yes, because newts and salamanders grow their front legs first. Frogs grow their back mm -hmm. legs first. So, uh, yeah, because frogs need to jump. Yep, jump and swim. Uh, so we feed them, we clean them. How many do we have right about now? 
we had around 70 eggs. We either have around 70 or had around 70. We had about 70 eggs. Yeah. Uh, and we are now down. around 50. Ooh, no, it's less than that. No, uh, last time I counted, I think it was like 35. It's about 35. It's about 30 to 40. Um, oh, okay. You know, we lost a few babies here and that didn't make it. Some eggs didn't hatch. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, my dad, your your grandfather in the chat said about the red bellies. You want to talk about the red bellies? Oh, yeah. Um, it's really cool because when you look at them, majority of them, other than like two that I'm surprised they're still alive, have red bellies because of the brine shrimp mm -hmm. it's like uh flamingos they eat the pink shrimp and they become pink except their body their the, entire body doesn't become red it's just their clear bellies well and the reason we can see the yeah. red bellies on ours is because ours are leucistic yeah and they're small and they're, and they're small clear. so they're still pretty transparent they're so small you can see through and you can see the food in their stomach yep so ribbed newts they uh they are there. We've talked about them before when we had a uh, fuddy on. We talked about them. Uh, they, they're better than axolotls. They have been fun. I will say I was not excited about putting another rack in our house. I was not excited about the amount of space it was going to take up. I was not excited that it was taking over my dining room and kitchen. Um, but you guys have quite the setup now. It's, it's very nice. You guys found an awesome rack system with lights on Facebook yeah, was Marketplace. A, someone on Facebook Marketplace was a they had breeding fish. Is what it was. Yeah, they're breeding fish and they built a rack that holds four 10 gallon tanks, two on each shelf, and then each one already had yeah. LED lights that do the daylight night lights for only like 80 bucks is what I think we paid for it. The lights yeah. alone were probably worth 80 bucks and the wood was probably worth another although nowadays the wood maybe went worth $200. Um, and it fits right there in, in our kitchen because that was the only space left in the house to yeah. put stuff. It's pretty cool. So definitely a conversation starter. Now we're just waiting for our female at some point to produce more eggs. So we haven't, I haven't seen any breeding activity in our adults. So yeah, not yet. Maybe they'll slow down. Is there anything else you would like to talk about Joe? Um, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Get back to what you were doing. We'll see you later. Okay. All right. Love, love you. Bye. <laughs> love you. Bye. <laughs> Okay. 206 episodes is how long it took for her to get on here. Yeah. And that's only because I told her to get her phone and call in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anybody else, if you want to call in, uh, have anything you want to talk about, anything you saw on here, anything that's going on, if you just want to talk about what, what you got going on at your house, that's cool. Let's go over some of the things that uh, US Arc were waiting on phone calls. Uh, we talked about a few of these. One was the Arizona warrantless animal seizures. Yes. And that was going to affect our friends over at Colossal Constrictors. Correct. Um. You know, they'd be able to come into your house without a warrant and be able to take things. And it would be up to them on what was animal cruelty and what's not animal cruelty. Like with a lot of laws, it had a lot of uh, gray areas. But luckily, the Arizona warrantless seizure bill was on the 15th agenda, and uh, it was not heard. Basically, it was tabled or held with no vote due to overwhelming public opposition. Yes, which, which is great. Is great. Uh, that that whole process is, is just scary. The idea that a neighbor could call and say, it, you uh, look, some of us have a large amount of snakes and you know a lot of us take care of our animals properly but when someone hears that someone has 50 snakes in their house right they run with that and then they go tell uh someone about it and how horrible it is and then they come without a warrant and they can come into your house and even if you're doing stuff legal that's still just a whole headache that you don't want to deal with trust me it sucks uh cop this one was weird the colorado pet tax for all animals which would affect our buddy jason miller Adovich. after receiving overwhelming opposition from the concerned coloradians color colorado coloradians Sure. What the fuck do you say that? Folks from Colorado uh, and animal welfare and interest organizations, the bill sponsor heard the opposition loud and clear and pulled the bill. Thank you. That was going to tax like every animal you own. That was like every fish. It yeah. wasn't like your here's your fish tank. It was each fish in this fish tank has a bill. You have doves. Oh, you have three dozen doves. You, All you of have 25 doves. snakes born. That's 25 new animals they can tax. Yeah. So that is great. That is gone. So there, there, there were a lot of small victories, which can be big victories, depending on how you look at it. Um, South Carolina, I didn't read the South Carolina one. <laughs> Representatives uh, Hickson introduced a bill which creates Chapter 17 under the title. Fit. There's a lot of shit going on here. Reading the bill is quite alarming, but please allow us to explain the intent. Mm, this seems like something Katie should read and then explain to me while I'm reading everything else. I can do that. Let me go back to where I was because that's... 
of Washington Animal Program ban. The bills are dead for the year as they fail to be assigned hearings uh, and clear committee before the cutoff date. That's awesome. There's a lot of animal bans that keep going around. So the folks in Washington, oh, we have a phone call. Let's see who it is. One second. Hello, can you hear us? I can hear you. How's it going, guys? Good. How's it going? Tell everybody your name. Uh, my name is Louis Batoy. I'm the owner of Little Shop of Heart. <laughs> I knew the voice. I was like, I know who that is. How's it going, man? It's going. It's going. You're... If I'd call in, say hey, and see what's up with you guys. Not much. You're busy. When's your? Uh, you got a show coming up, don't you? Or you just had it? Yeah, we just did our uh, the San Antonio uh, Reptile Expo here. Uh, it was put on by Reptile Feds Direct, and man, that was a. Uh, that was a blast. That was our first time doing that. And, uh, it, it was definitely our first time. Our, our banner was all crooked. It <laughs> took days and days longer for it to get to us than we expected, but getting to have, uh, getting to meet people that knew who we were and hadn't had the chance to meet him yet was, uh, was very, very cool. Our friend, uh, Paul was at that show this weekend with his ball pythons and he was actually set up next to our friend, Jessica Anderson, uh, who's the book author. Yeah. She was there this weekend. They were both messaging me. They're like, look who I get to hang out with this weekend. And I was like, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, so Lewis, what did you, so you did the show and you and I talked, you talked to several people prior to the show. Cause it's, it's very nerve wracking. If you've never done a show trying to figure out what you need and then you get there and you set up for it. And then there's probably like 15 things you're like, Oh God, I wish I'd have brought that. So what are the top things you learned after the show that you're like, all right, next time I'm doing it different. Um, so some of the things that kind of, that, that popped up, uh, you know, bringing, uh, more supplies of like smaller stock, or I guess more, more stock, but more smaller feeders. Uh, that was something where I was like, okay, if I need to do that, uh, you know, just, just kind of honing that stuff in, uh, game plan was to get a bigger freezer, ended up running behind on stuff. So we ended up having to take one of our smaller freezers and, and that didn't help anything. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Luckily, you know, it was a home show that, for I'll... you. Go ahead. Luckily, you were at home, and if you needed anything, you could run home and grab it. Yes, and that was something that we, we definitely learned. Uh, there's a there's another show we'll be doing in June, uh, the uh, Drip and Dragon show. And so that uh, my game plan for that was to drive back and forth from the show to I, but. Each, in Antonio, that was that was hard. We were waking up at like four every morning, loading up uh, live animals, refreshing everything, and getting it taken over there. So it, it was a pretty long weekend for us, but uh, uh, Lizzie Lizzie made it happen, and, and we got it done. So. Well, it makes sense bringing smaller stuff. Everybody there buying babies for the most part, so smaller food or prey items would make sense for them. Yes, yes, it was a, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Were there anything, any supplies that you needed for yourself that you didn't have, like surge protectors or enough paper towels or any of that stuff? Well, no, thankfully, I, I spoke to you before <laughs> and I and, uh, had a few friends reach out to me and also suggest things. So I, I took all that to heart. And so we had the, the surge protector. We had extra paper towels. We had the receipt paper, uh, learning square for the first yeah. time. That was interesting. I should have probably used it before, but that, that was our first <laughs> time using that. You know, so it's funny that it, you it say that. Fine, it's funny because when uh, Girl Scout cookie season started, we got a new processing where the girls can actually take credit cards now, which is great because so many people at booths are like, oh, I don't have any cash. Okay, yeah, we can fix that now. But we actually got an email from our cookie booth coordinator with the troop and they, she said, okay, buy a box of cookies from your child, have them run your credit card, do this now before you get to a booth so that you can practice beforehand. Yeah. And that's not something like I've done reptile shows. I've done, I've helped run the, the gate at herp shows, like the door, the entry. And I've done square stuff for James at his booth before. I never even thought, Hey, let's test out this new program. And this is something that I consider myself not a novice in by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, you don't think about if you have a new system to learn, just making sure that everything goes smoothly. Well, well, the other thing I learned is that not all 
cards are tap cards. Yes. So, so that was interesting. Just because it has a chip on it doesn't mean you can rub it on the back of your phone and it magically works. So uh, thankfully, I didn't mess up when I had to write anybody's uh, stuff down or type their stuff. And if I'm typing my own credit card, I, I mess it up every time. But, I do too. But I was I was good all weekend, so I just didn't mess it up once. I, I was impressed. I guess if it's other people's money, it's easier, I guess. Well, I try to have, uh, if you buy the little square reader, it also will come with still the magnetic strip slides. I try to keep that. The problem is that magnetic strip slide uh, has to plug into a little adapter in the bottom of your phone, and it plugs into like the old iPhone bottom adapter. It's, it's a pain in the butt. you got to have adapters for everything now. But uh, every now and then I run into one where I have to run a, the magnetic strip on it instead of the tap. So I try to keep that on hand. Just well, to- and the issue I ran into with that is that for, for some reason, whatever setting I needed to have or whatever I needed to figure out, I could not get the swiping to work once. So that's when I was having to manually type it in and it was no problem. And you know, again, just it, it's kind of funny, you know, you, you meet people and you're nervous to step out and do those things. And, and then, you know, just explain to people, Hey, if this is my first time. Just bear with me. Give me one second. And just yeah. how great people were about that, you know, yeah. just understanding and supportive. And it was so cool. You know, it's, it's a new hobby now from when I was younger and, and you know, people are so great. It was just uh, it was a really good time. Well, it's amazing how people will deal with things taking a little longer if you just smile. Like if you yeah. if you smile, yeah. say, my bad, sorry, give me a second. It's funny that you say that. There was an older gentleman who was buying cookies from Joe at one of the first booths this year that she did, and he was paying with a card. And she told him, "This is a new system. I'm so sorry that it's taking a little bit longer." And she kept smiling at him and she was, you know, engaging him in conversation while she was taking care of what she needed to. And he was like, oh, honey, I'm getting to buy cookies. You just take as long as you need. Like he really did not care. And he was excited to see her learning something. But you're right. A smile can go a long way. Yes. In everything in life. Yeah, that's very true. Imagine with a good attitude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine how many sales. How many sales do you think you would have missed out on if you couldn't take a card? Oh, the majority. Yeah. The majority of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. If you're doing a show now, that is a necessity. I think the next thing you're going to see become even more common is the pay in four options that a lot of people do. Um, you'll see a lot more people be able to make different sales on the pay in four where someone can, they can pay you for it and you get paid by the company. And then that person can go on and make four different payments spread over however long. Um, but it allows you to make a big sale to someone who goes, Hey, I don't have 400 bucks this month. I got it. Can I split it up? you can do is pay in four programs and you get your money and that's covered. And then uh, the other person, the other part yeah, deals with it. So you can do PayPal, the PayPal paying for, and then there's the shop. There's a couple other ones. Yeah. A firm, a firm is longer than four. Six. A firm is normally, and that's normally a monthly thing. Yeah. So that's a, uh, so that's even different because so, like the PayPal pay in four, it's every two weeks. So if those are things that people out there are setting up for shows, a great thing to look into, especially if you've got higher price, even if they're not higher price items, sometimes people just don't have 150 bucks or whatever. Um, but those paying for options mean that you can still sell, make more sales, just like having credit cards allow you to make more sales. And uh, uh, yeah, just with, with PayPal, the paying for the minimum is $50. Yeah. Cause I use that for a lot of the concerts that we go to. <laughs> That's how we get to go and do so much. I have a big PayPal pay yeah. for <laughs> Yeah, and most of, you know most of the stuff that w- was coming through was you know people picking up you know twenty five you know kind of rodents at a time. Yeah, you know I I was kind of concerned thinking oh I should probably bring bigger coolers and stuff like that because we always like to provide a cooler and, and dry ice. We don't want you know your prey items thawing out on your way home and then you know you're getting home and you got a you know just a mess in your bag going on. So we want to make sure we keep them frozen so that they're fresh. They're as fresh as, uh, you know, they can be for you. So, you know, but uh, other than that, you know, just a lot of a lot of, kind of smaller sales and just consistent all day and just getting to talk with people. It was so cool. You know, one thing I remember from when I was a little kid going to snake shows and everybody would ignore me, you know, and yes. it was like I wasn't there. And they'd be talking to my parents. And meanwhile, I, I'm the one with the wad of cash in my pocket. And I, I'm the one that knows what's going on here. <laughs> And uh, no one would give me the time of day. And so that was something I remembered from being younger. And so just seeing little kids come up and, and just, you know, getting to engage with them and hearing what they kept and, and being enthusiastic with them was, was so much fun. 
because uh, that's how I wanted to be treated when I was younger. And uh, it was just good to finally be able to do it from from an adult uh, and on you know on that scale. I think that's how I got tricked into buying my and first Rainbow Boa. As a parent, I can tell you that I will spend way more money with you when you acknowledge my child than if you. Yeah, I think them. the problem was the person acknowledged me when I bought my Rainbow Boa, and so I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy it for this person, and then stupid me bought a Rainbow Boa as my first night. Yeah. So. I mean, he lived. It's, because a lot it, of times when we go places, that's the reason I bought the car I bought is because I was going to lots. And I'm like, look, my husband's not the one buying the car. I'm the one buying the car. And they all kept wanting to give you all the attention anyways. Because I'm better. No. Except for the one guy that was like, okay, and then completely ignored you and gave me all of his focus. And that was who I bought my car through. But no, when like when we take Joe places, when when people talk to her and have conversations with her, is is not as difficult now because she's you know five foot six and she looks like she's she looks like she's adult. grown yeah. and she's only thirteen. But when she was smaller, it, it that was important to me. Like this is for her, not for me. And and that's important in the hobby. There's a there are a lot of folks who will they will and it's not even just kids. A lot of folks will ignore people they think don't have money or are not going to buy something. Right. Mm -hmm. And you don't really know all the time who has money, who is going to buy. From. Look, I've sold plenty of snakes to people that I thought there's no way this person's buying a snake. But you talk to them anyways because they're at your booth and you're at a show. I mean, you're there to talk reptiles. And the great thing for you, Lewis, is that yeah. it's a home show for you. So not only are you that, but you're setting up customers for down the road. Yeah. Yeah. And just getting to talk with the different vendors and kind of getting to understand their needs. Uh, that, that was so it was so great to be in that environment just surrounded with like-minded people that, you know, are, are as passionate about it as we are. It's a good network. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then back to the whole kid thing, you know, I, I just think for everybody, right. We need to be conscious that, that these people are, are the next generation of what we're doing. Right. It, it was pretty interesting. Not too long ago, I had a, uh, had a young man who to me. So I just saw him post on Facebook saying that, they they needed some feeders and tanks and stuff for their school program and and so I kind of followed up just because the, the account itself was kind of kind of weird and just you know look look weird but followed up with the whole situation and <coughs> end up getting a you know link to the uh, the school's uh, I guess activities page and they had it listed and and the teacher that had set that up had posted saying that. You know, to get more kids involved with the with the reptile or the dying reptile hobby, and you know, talking about it fading away, and I, I just think that's so funny because because I don't think it's fading away. Oh, I, I think don't. it's getting stronger. Yeah. I agree. And especially as as we start to get you know more people, and we're all moving into smaller houses, and we have less room. You know, reptiles are a great pet for people. They're low maintenance. Uh, they're easy to take. You know, low maintenance, easy to take care of. Uh, you know, you can set up a really cool tank, especially with, you know, the planted tanks and stuff they're doing. That's not something that, that I've ever done, but I love the idea. I'm you there know, with I got you. to spend a lot of time. Go ahead, sir. I said, I'm there with you. I, I, I don't have I, I maybe the patience to take care of a planted tank. And people will tell you it's easy once it's set up. It's, it's just not for me. But I do love that people are doing it. Yeah. And, and I got to spend a, a lot of time in the UK when you know, and getting to, because I've always been to pet shops ever since I was a little kid. So getting to spend time over there, what did I want to go do? I want to go look at pet shops and see how they're set up over here and what are they doing different. And, you know, this was 12 years ago and just seeing what the average pet shop was doing there, you know, it was like, this, this isn't the way that we do it in the United States. And I was always thought that sooner or later, the European model of keeping is going to come to the United States. And so seeing some of those different regulations lift up on just like feeder insects that you could do that you can ship across state lines like grasshoppers. Yeah. I think that's so great. That's part of the reason why we started doing Madagascar hits and cockroaches at a reasonable cost was how do we get monitor keepers what they need, right? You, you can't be spending $2 each for a Madagascar hits and cockroach and you can produce quite a few of them. So let's try to make it reasonably cost you know, at a reasonable cost so that people can afford to pay, you know, to feed their monitors a more natural diet that's going to be better for the animal, you know? And uh, <clears throat> just seeing all the planted tanks there that people are doing, you know, you can just walk in, 
you know, from like Seth at Huff Church and seeing what he's doing, where you can just get a whole setup from him and you're good to go. Totally. You know, mm-hmm. making it easy for people. I, I, I love seeing it. That's uh, we had a Kai fan on a while back and Kai does grasshoppers and it's, it's, and it's been interesting to watch him grow because he does lots of different types of grasshoppers now, things that people don't even think about. And talk to him about the legalities of being able to ship grasshopper. You don't even think that the be able to ship a grasshopper from one state to another in our country is is yeah. weird. Well, that when I came back from the kid, that was one of the first things I looked into. Is, can I do this here? And and you couldn't at the time. There was no way to legally ship, you know, crickets across like that. And and now that you can, I I love it. I love seeing it. I love seeing his success and that he's doing good. You know that. That's what we need. How do we keep moving forward and doing better for the animals that we have? Not just doing the standard thing that, yeah, that works. And there's nothing wrong with that. And keep however you want. And as long as the animal's healthy and happy, I love it. But yeah. we can do more, you know, and, and we're learning more as time goes on. I think we need to. So I, I agree with everything you just said there. We, we can do more. But I think we also need as a hobby not to to shit on people who may not be doing more, but they're still doing right by the animal right a lot of us are simplistic keepers and people will look at that as oh you don't care about the animal which is totally not true it's just our ability to keep them properly is better if we do it simple versus someone else who can do more Uh, so it's funny you bring that up um so everybody knows i have tons of stuff in my classroom and i didn't actually tell you about this because i didn't really know how to handle the situation i do now um so i had a, a younger grade level teacher yeah was upstairs where the older kids are, walked by my classroom, popped her head in, and wanted to know why my guinea pig had such a sparse cage. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, you don't have anything in here for her. I was like, she has food. She has water. She has a litter box. You can't see her chew toys from the window because she drags them underneath the ramp. I said, and she gets handled five days a week. Yeah, she's always been taking out. I'm like, she's probably the most spoiled guinea pig on the face of this planet. But she wanted to come at me because she didn't think my guinea pig had enough in her case. See, in that situation, she should have been able to understand the guinea pig's not being kept the way she would keep a guinea pig. Yeah. But it's still being kept. Yeah, I told her, I, I said, look, I said, on the weekends when we're not here, she has a ball and I open the drawer next to her and there's like, there's Halloween costumes for this guinea pig. There are, I mean, some people might consider that torture, but oh, there's weird. there's balls that she can play with. There's chew toys for her. Like she gets all that stuff on Friday when we're gone for the weekend. Yeah, I'm like, uh, who do you think you are coming in my classroom? To like, I'm the zoology club sponsor. I worked at a zoo. Come on, like, but but again, the, the way you keep it is perfectly fine, and the way she wants to keep one. Fine would also be perfectly fine. I've never had that happen to me in, a, in the classroom weird. before. That is weird. Well, I think I think that kind of goes back to the same thing we see online, right? Where we see people that are new to the hobby, that are that are as passionate about it as we are, but they're going through, you know, not that YouTube isn't a great resource for information or Google, but it's, you know, it's pretty limited and you're getting potentially one person's opinion on the situation and you know, for for the vast majority of us, we've been doing this for, for years and years. It's been a part of our lives ever since, you know, we were these people's ages or younger. And so we've seen it evolve and we've 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 messed up and we've learned from those mistakes, uh, at least you should be. And so when we see those things, we understand that, hey, this is acceptable and this is OK. But, you know, the way that, you know, it, the, a lot of these Facebook groups online while some of them are, are great resources for networking and, and learning information and being able to ask things, you know, at the same time, it creates this echo chamber where you have these people that are maybe handy with Facebook and, you know, can, can communicate well, and they end up in admin positions on these pages, and, and they, they don't know anything. Yeah. And so you end up getting shouted down by you know, a bunch of people that, that don't necessarily know what they're talking about. And then you have admins jumping on, which you're just going to assume that that person has a grasp or a good understanding of whatever that topic is, or that group is. And, uh, you know, in my experience, more often than not, it, it's not been the case. And you end up seeing people, you know, taking down the wrong path. Well, you know, the problem is waiting not too long. Well, they see a Facebook group and they assume that a Facebook group is official. 
like that the Facebook group, if it's about, well, I'll go with something that, because it's in the room and we've had the issue with it, Panther Chameleons. If there's a Facebook group about Panther Chameleons, then obviously everyone in that group is official. And if you're an admin, you definitely know what's going on. But anybody can make a Facebook group. And so, like you said, it becomes an echo chamber. The admins end up kind of kicking out people that think differently because they can do that because it's their group. And then it starts to come one way. And and, and like you said earlier, the, the great thing is we're seeing people, you know, houses they're having to downsize reptiles make great pets and before we got this panther chameleon i would not have suggested a panther chameleon to make a great pet for a home uh because i'm like oh they're too difficult but thanks to the readies this thing is probably the easiest thing we have and, in our house and if you of. and if you have a house a small house where you just need one or pet it would be a great pet to have in your living room because you can sit there and watch it everybody can enjoy feeding it and taking care of it and it's not that hard but you know, I've got mine set up with plastic plants, and according to Facebook, I'm going to kill them with plastic plants. Oh, you adjusted the camera. That's why you can't see him anymore. Yeah, it's, it's zoomed in. It is zoomed in. I just noticed that. What? I've been on for an hour. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you hear back in the day of, of when, you know, people were first getting, you know, like fat tails in and, and these different animals, and they would just put them in like a trough with a hundred of them. Yeah. Uh, and then they would just hope that they bred, you know, and, and you know, that that also worked at a point and allowed them to figure out how to do it. You know, we, we've moved so far past that. You know, I, I remember hearing stories about, you know, my friends ripping refrigerators apart to get the, the heating elements out to, to create the heat, you know, source for their animals, for the racks that they made, you know, and it's, we don't do that anymore. There's a whole industry out where you can now get these things where we were having to make it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I have a rack. I have a rack in my garage that was made by Tim Gebhardt. You know, I don't know how many years ago. And this thing's amazing. It has bifolding doors on it, adjustable cool. shelves. And they made a heating element, you know, control for it that you can switch, you know, you, you turn the little knob up and down and, you know, these, these guys made this stuff. There, there was the idea of ordering it online. I mean, I remember when Oophile started selling the rack, you know, and yeah. it was, that was the, that was the person you got your snake rack from. I, I wasn't aware of anybody else at the time doing it. And I remember getting that for Christmas one year and, you know, I still have that rack to this day. Uh, I, uh, I, I like seeing the involvement over time where we're going and where we started speaking of involvement of supplies if uh, anybody's looking for an led uvb light bulb check out viv tech products and use code gumbo 22 to say 15 percent. just gotta get my free plug I in like there. that plug there man. i know it's uh they're right behind me lighting up this cage i just had to make sure i said that uh but yeah i, I like seeing it's like you say both file when i used to think black pvc cages it was them like that was that was the one i always pictured it was like i think they're like the t18 model or whatever it was however they named it and uh that's what you saw everywhere um, you know, you go from, uh, for people that do remember way back, Neodesha cages, or however you pronounce it, yeah. uh, the, which to me is still maybe the dumbest shape of a cage. We had a ton of those at the, at the zoo. zoo. <laughs> Unless you had a rack to hold them properly, like that triangle shape just made so many things difficult. But that was the reptile cage for a lot of people throughout the 90s and probably 80s. I mean, those are old. But uh, seeing where we're at now is kind of cool. And look, I'm all, for, I, I use very basic black PVC cages that are just a, a rectangle, but I love seeing what our friends with the sign behind here, go ahead and give a plug for uh focus cube products, our focus cube enclosures and all uh, their cages that they make for things like monitors, like species specific, specific stuff is, is really cool to see. Well, interesting. just because you're keeping in a manner where like, I do the same thing. I keep all my animals in drawers. Uh, I don't do bioactive, but what I do what I will do is I'll put in uh, oak leaves in there and I put pieces of bark in there yeah. and I'll change them out. You know, I don't switch them from cage to cage, but I will replace them with new fresh pieces. And to see those animals go over there and sniff each leaf and, and see what's going on. You know, I think there's value in that. These, you know, I, I think that there's a balance between anthropomorphizing these animals and just kind of realizing that they are a thinking thing, right? I think that there's a balance between those two things. You know, like when you hear the person, oh, this snake is bonding with me. Well, you know, I'm not going to tell you that's not what's happening because whatever, you know, whatever. But but that's not what's happening. Right? I saw one the other day. Was, uh, the person said, my snake will not eat if I don't hold it on a regular basis. I'm like, yeah, it will. Like, it will. But 
Well, that's like, you know, the one I've heard for, for years, ever since, you know, I was a little kid, you know, volunteering at a pet shop was, oh, my snake will only eat a mouse if it's, you know, this color, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, is born on this day or whatever. And, you know, I've, uh, you know, I have a ton of snakes. I've had hundreds of snakes over the years. I have never experienced that. And I've been hoping one day I want to experience that. So when someone tells me that, because I still hear it regularly, you know, especially nowadays, and it's like, I, I believe you, that you are telling me that. You are saying that, and I believe that to be true. I, I believe but you I believe it's never true. never experienced that. Yeah. I, well, I've heard that before. My snake will only eat dark mice. I'm like, what? This doesn't make any sense. And look. So it's funny you say that. So I fed my corn snake in my classroom the other day because you pulled something out for me to take to feed. Yeah. And, um. It was not because the white, red eye, those freak me out. So James never pulls that for me to have to take. Um, but anyways, I one of my co-teacher's daughters, she's a first grader. And she was like, can I come watch? I was like, as long as your mom's cool with it, I don't care. Come on. She literally watched from the moment the snake struck until the spaghetti tail was down <laughs> and she rehinged her jaw. She stood in a chair watching this because she couldn't see the that was me when i first got my snake i was like that she asked a million questions all very intelligent one of which was how come the snake wasn't solid white um (laughs) which is what made me think of this but it was just it was really fascinating to be able to see that experience through the eyes of a child who never gets to see it well i think everyone that's owned a snake first time they feed a snake does that or maybe the first 20 times they feed a snake does that like Maybe, maybe not you because you kind of came into it after I already owned snakes. Yeah. But like, I know when I first fed my my rainbow boa, I, I would watch the entire process. Yeah. I just, it, she was really fun. But she asked me, she's like, how come this mouse has colors on it? And I was like, well, how come you're the color you are and I'm the color I am? That's pretty racist. Hey, God, that's <laughs> like, up. I didn't know how else to explain it. Like, your hair is different <laughs> than my hair. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I like to feed... What? dark colored mice because I have sand boas and they'll drag their damn mouse into the Aspen shavings and then not eat it. (laughs) And it's easier. It's easier to see a black mouse in Aspen shavings than it is to see a white mouse in Aspen shavings. That's funny. Wow. Anyways, go ahead. I'm usually a a smell based. uh, If I smell something, I got to start digging. Yeah. That's what he has to do. Cause I can walk in downstairs and be like, go to the snake room now. (laughs) Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I don't want to take up all the time, let other people get in here, but uh, I appreciate you guys taking my call and uh, I always enjoy listening to the podcast. You guys keep it up and and thank you very much. Thank you, Lewis. We'll talk to you later. Yes, sir. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye, Katie. Bye. All right. So if anybody wants to join in, feel free. Our our number on the bottom is 662-476-2537 or 662, the number four snakes for those old people that still know how to spell words out on their phone if you're not you know 12 uh going back to some of these bands did uh, you get to the louisiana one yet? i'm almost that's there the one that i wanted i'm to almost there <laughs> the florida ban on all iguanas correct uh it seeks to expand the ban on green iguanas uh to include all iguana species uh that one's still i think ongoing i don't think that one's closed out yet but that's one people need to pay attention to it would do not just green iguanas, which I think are crappy pets anyways, but some people love them. But it would do the rock iguanas, the spiny-tailed iguanas, the rhino iguanas, some of the iguana species that are much better. You know what it would not do? Fiji banded iguanas, because we can't own those anyways. Uh, Louisiana. It's a Louisiana herp regulation. After hearing the concerns from herp to culturalist, the commissioners voted to table the proposal, meaning it did not pass and will not be heard. At a, it will be heard at a later date. Thank you for those who submitted comments, especially those who could make it uh, to today's speaking, uh, speak at the hearing. So yeah, that was on March seventh. Yeah, the hearing literally happened last week. But that uh, that that shows you making those emails, making those phone calls, showing up. That stuff's important. What's really great though is in, on the Louisiana issue is that the staff was directed to collect more evidence and to pull more data and more information. And so when the issue comes back up in a few months, in a few months they're going to have to have that more information. So I, I thought that was really good. Yes. I, uh, those are some of the big ones. I saw Colorado, Arizona, and Louisiana all all succeeded What there. was the one you told me you wanted me to South read? South Carolina. I didn't know what was going on in South Carolina. No, I don't have an email. I don't have that in any- It may not be. That yet. may have come out in the email yeah. in two days. Uh, 
Timothy said, still love feeding a uh, day, but I don't watch them through the whole process anymore. Yeah, you get to a point where it's just ridiculous. Uh, but that uh, just that they take it and eat it or it's gone in the morning. I love that he added a correction or like not correction, but added a clarification. Yeah. He feeds frozen thawed, never leaves a live feeder in overnight, yeah. of course. You know, that's actually a conversation that I had based on the feeding the other day. Um, the little girl that was watching, she wanted to know how come it wasn't a live mouse. And so I told her about the concerns with live feeding and how, you know, then, of course, she had like 40 million questions on what do you mean you have a freezer full of frozen rats at your house? Like, you know, all she was nothing freaked her out. She was fascinated by everything. I, it's always funny to hear the argument by uh, and these are usually by adults. The, the whole argument when you're like, yeah, frozen thaw is safer. And then you'll see people go, yeah, but it's not natural. They eat live stuff in the wild. So why? I'm like. Nothing we do is natural. It's, it's a fucking snake in a box in your house. Like it's not, it's not really natural. So yeah. that that argument feels weird. I mean, you cook your cow before you eat it, so I would the, hope. <laughs> I don't know. You eat pretty rare steaks. I mean, they're not blue in the middle, so we're fine. Your shit could move still. So it is not. But uh, yeah, frozen thawed is just it's so much easier to me. I, I can't imagine feeding. You know, I know some people with large collections they feed live here and there. I I don't know. I just it's still frozen is so much better for me. Uh, anyways, moving on. What else we got, Katie? Anything else? Um, Ph phone lines are open. If anybody wants to call, phone lines are open. We have to do this. Oh, I know what I want to do. It's it's a new week, a new list of stupid names. You weren't here for last week's list. What are we talking about? Oh, so the morphs. The, no, no, no. These are the morphs. These are the, uh, these are the business names. You told me you wanted to start from Morph this. Market. You actually did it. I did. James. Last week we did boas. That's not okay. It's okay. Uh, this week we're gonna I do, do not approve of this segment. It's fine. Look, if the people think I'm an asshole for this, they've missed they've so many other moments where I've been an asshole. You well enough. Uh, this week we're gonna. Do you want to do beard dragons, or do you want to do the top like, or do the first six or seven of ball pythons? Do ball pythons. All right, we're gonna do beer dragons another day then. All right, so I've got a long list of ball pythons. Uh, it, it'll probably. A long list. Oh my god, look Good at this! Lord. That's all ball pythons. James. So we're not gonna do all of them. Much. We're not doing all of them today. We're gonna do a handful of them today. These are uh, ridiculous names of of ball pythons. I'm gonna give you the. And it's not in any order. These aren't the worst or best or whatever. Just the first. Uh, we'll go first ten. Uh, the first one on my list that I saw was Caleb's Exotics and more. Just come on, that's a ridiculous. James. You are not very nice. I couldn't help. Caleb's was the first one that popped up when I went to the ball. Was it really? I saw it and I was like, I'm putting it on the list. Those of you that don't know Caleb, uh, we've had on uh, it's a it's a it's a joke. A it's a running he's, joke. It's it's a thing. He's on all several other podcasts. He somehow became famous for being Caleb. But I was a joke for that's more goofy just because of who the person is, not the business name. But here's some of the uh actual business actual names. business names that people chose. These are the winning ones. You've got to imagine there were names that they did not choose. Oh, I know. Hold on. So, uh, it does sound like a strip club, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> for keep snakes, for keep snakes was like a, the number four. No, no, just the word for keep snakes instead of for keepsakes. Yeah, you realize the problem with this is I'm gonna have to try to rationalize their business names. There's and no, some of these can't not, be rationalized. Can't, no, they're, they're stupid. They're they're stupid all around. Uh, here's one. The person's name is Nick Verga. His business is NV in letters, NV, envy my balls. Anything with balls makes me laugh. I did leave off all of the people who was their name and then balls. So that was like childish. There were a lot of them. daughter's giving me a look. There were the a lot of them. It with, is with very the, childish. We are, we, but we are in a few weeks going to have Bob's balls on here. By I the know. Way. And it makes me laugh. I'm like, uh, why? I, I won't why? do ball pythons that week. But uh, envy my balls. That was on there. Uh, this one is the letters D and Z. DZ. Like D's right. balls ending in Z. D's balls. I mean, at least they're consistent with the letter Z. Yeah. The next one I had to read twice. The name is Lady Tiz Exotics LLC, but I thought it said Lady Tits Exotics LLC. <laughs> that is, uh, you got to look at that twice. It's Lady L A D Y T I S. Look at Lady Tit Exotics. I know, and and it's an LLC. They made that an LLC. They went the extra that's, step. That's like a legitimate. Oh no, there's some better ones on this list. They went the extra step and made an LLC. Uh, but we'll get to those in in future weeks. I'm gonna save some of these. Uh, the next one was handle these balls. Yep, someone chose that. That was the winning one. Can you imagine their list of ones they didn't go with? 
<laughs> I suck on these balls. Oh, chocolate salty balls. That's probably already for the South Fork fans out there. Uh, this is Dave's Danger Noodles. That's kind of cute. It's not fucking cute. Stop that. It's cute. not. It's stupid. Dave's Danger Noodles. I think it's cute. Shut the hell up. That's horrible. <laughs> the next one, Pythonosaur. They like dinosaurs. It doesn't make it a good business name. Pythons. Pythonosaur. Oh god. Not Pythonosaur exotics. Pythonosaur reptiles. Pythonosaur snake. Pythonosaur. Ooh. Uh, this one for those of you like naked and afraid. This is snaked and af- snaked and afraid exotics. Snaked. But it makes you want to say snaked and afraid because because <laughs> that's the way it's spelled. <laughs> dumb, right? Dumb. Just dumb. Dumb. Are you doing the strip club yet? Yeah, I'm, uh, th- I'll, we'll, we'll, I, I got two more. We'll do the strip club and then one. We'll, well, we'll do this one. The next one is got balls? Question mark. Got balls. Or got milk. Yeah, no, we get it. We get it. It doesn't make it good. I'm just saying. And uh, I'm sure Dave is a great guy from Dave's Danger Noodles. It doesn't make I it a dumb a, name. I need Dave from Dave's Danger Noodles to be on the podcast now. Mm, we have that. to reach out to Dave at Dave's Danger Noodles. Oh, fuck that. I can't do it. I can't. I'll do it. I will find Dave and Dave oh. can be on the podcast. So this next one sounds like a strip club. <laughs> uh, and I'm pretty sure somewhere it is a strip club. Great plan, Timothy. <laughs> the name is The Banana Stand. Banana stand. That's a strip club. I don't know That's what it sounds like. Gotta be. Gotta be somewhere. Google yes. The Banana I'm Stand. I'm kind of afraid. Why don't you do it on your phone? Nope. Google The Banana Stand. Uh... Do you really know him, Timothy? Like, is this a, are you just being silly or do you really know him? Uh, Dave, not the banana stand. That's the, yeah, that's no. uh, but one, the banana stand really, you better like bananas because that's the morph that everybody's going to expect you to only have. And uh, it just. So first of all, when you pull it up, there's like seven different restaurants that come up. So I'm yeah, going to type yes, reptile. Yes, ready. We understood it. it would be a male strip club. I, that's, I didn't feel I needed to explain that, but. The ready if you want to feel free to call in. The phone number's across the bottom. It's six six two four snakes. You can call us. Talk about anything. You can talk about the awesome roach food that I need to feed my roaches. Actually, are you looking up? All I can find on them is morph market information. So no strip clubs. Did you type in the banana stand strip club? See if anything comes up. No, I'm not typing that in on my phone. I'll type it then on my it computer. Will show up in my, well, go for it. It's your computer. B a n a n a s. That's how you spell that. Joe sang that in the car earlier. <laughs> Because I was talking about how I miss eating bananas. They run my sugar up too high. I can't eat them. I don't see a place called the banana stand. Someone's missing out. Someone needs to open a strip club called the banana stand. <clears throat> oh, did I have a missed call from the... Re- you can call now. Lines are open. Lines are open. Feel free to call. Oh, maybe that's why. It maybe we were on busy. The 662, four snakes. Uh, there is not a banana stand. So I'm just saying... Someone's missing an opportunity. That is only a small part of the uh, ball python part it's of this list. It's a reptile. St- it's like a pet store. Dave's Danger Dave. Noodle. I'm totally fixing it. Te- he's, he's a local. What? One of our listeners knows him. Dedicated to finding the right snake or danger All right, well, noodle. If he comes on, I'm, make, if he comes on, I'm telling him I made fun of his business name. I don't care. Look how cute. No, I saw the, the lo- website is great. Jesus Christ. This is happening. You want me to also call it the banana stand? No, I could, they didn't have a website. They're not as cool as Dave. Uh, I probably got like three more episodes worth of Ball Python business names. He also takes good photographs. Does he? He does. Way to go for Look Dave. at that. Like that's legitimate. There's a photo box too, and everything. It's too legit. Too legit to quit. Hey, hey. Some of these Ball Pythons are out of my price range. Uh, all of them are out of my want range. <laughs> so, so yes, that was that was our first part of Ball Pythons. Next week, we'll do Bearded Dragons. And then on the podcast, you can ask him, how did you come up with the name, Dave? Well, yes, think, the ramen noodles. I don't care how he came up with the name. I, I still find it ridiculous. I love this. Reached out to him. I, uh, oh God, this, I, I, I hate that we're not going through the entire list of all pythons because there are some ridiculous ones. But I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them for, for the future. For, leave, you, leave you wanting more. Uh, some of them weren't so bad. Like retakes, which I thought was going to be pretty bad. Not as horrible as you thought. Uh, Leopard Gecko is not pretty bad. Beer Dragons. I mean, I didn't put every single one there that tried to be creative with the word dragon. So many fucking ones with the word dragon. But anyways, from Morgantown. That's a legit snake hook. What are you looking at? My mom just sent me a video. I feel like I know this name. 
Yes, you do. We've had him on here. Okay, that's why I know the name. <laughs> I was like, I know that. I know the video and the font. That's Bruce. We've had Bruce I on like, here. I know this name. Yeah. It's he, use a tool. Don't be a fool. Yeah. And it's he's like flipping boards. It's uh, why you shouldn't use your Bruce bearings. Island. Yeah. We, yeah. We had him on. It's okay, California. I remember now. Yeah, I know. I know exactly who it is now. I just it took a minute. So the one's also the bucket. The the bucket is what made me think yeah. of it. Yeah. He's business. the one that works with like firefighters and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> I was like, well, my, should, mom, name my mom familiar. like started randomly he was a guest. Me stuff on Facebook. Man, none of our people are gonna call in. People were like, hey, y'all should do a call in show. We do a call in show. No, y'all Well, call-in. maybe because it was a last minute it thing. It was a last minute thing. I mean, we literally decided But, like, but I think we're gonna, I think we're, maybe we'll start doing this towards the end of every episode. Set aside the last 30 minutes for call ins. No. No, okay. No, because okay. you there are nights where we can't even get through with the guest and we run out of time. But Collins will be fun. Uh Bruce is training his daughter to catch snakes now. I, I think I saw that. There was actually a video I posted the other day of like his wife actually doing some stuff, and she's not even a snake person. Bruce is the one who has the giant um bull snake oh. that he found. A huge bull snake. Uh no, it's Dave's Danger Noodles and more. Didn't know there was another Dave's Danger Noodles. Is it the same? Is it on the same? Oh, one? did I find the? No, this no, is the same the ramen one. Noodle. The ramen noodle one. It's the same one. It's the same round. I can't imagine there's more than. I mean, I could imagine there's more than one. People. Uh, some of these names are not original, but Dave Danger Noodles. I'm finding him on Facebook now. You're gonna mar- send him a message. Go, hey, we made fun I of your name. Legit. Don't be on the podcast. You know, but his isn't. It's not the. It's not even the worst name we did tonight, though, on the ball pythons. I mean, envy my balls and D's balls are pretty bad. You just don't like it because it says danger noodle and you yes. don't like when people call snakes noodles. That's the only reason it made your list. Yeah, I'm glad you understand. <laughs> you understand the game. It's a cool looking snake with a big old eyeball. It's a danger noodle, Katie. Watch out for the danger noodle. That could also be another another strip club, actually. Dave's danger noodles. Oh, we got a phone call. Oh, you're such a mess. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, guest. It's Amanda. Hey, how's it, how's it going? Everybody, it's Amanda ready for Very anybody that doesn't understand that is a, uh, with the people that produce great roach food. Just got to get thrown out there. I mean, they, they okay chameleons, but great roach food. Whatever. It's hard to understand here this way. <laughs> Good. Make it even harder. Oh, I'll, I'll talk really, really fast. And then you won't understand anything. I'm, I'm going to need you to stop. Oh, okay. So, Amanda, what are y'all up to? We are actually building a new cage for a new chameleon that's coming Thursday. What is it? Well, you can guess. I'm going to go with it's very, well, will eventually be very large. (laughs) Yes, it will. (laughs) Is it a new Parsons? Yep, it's a male. Nice. Is it little now or is it already large? Oh, it's little now. Oh, okay. It's a baby. That's so cute. What stupid looking babies. Yeah, so it looks they literally look like old men. They really like are. Little <laughs> little old men. Wrinkly little I'll, chameleons. I'll send you a picture on uh, Facebook and you can see what we're talking about because it's literally an old man. So this gives you a baby body. This gives you a pair of Parsons now? Well, actually, it'll be a trio because nice. uh, we have two females. Hey, that's the right way to go. Reverse trio is a pain in the butt. <laughs> so, so if we, you know, go old school, this is now a one point two group. Can you know what those numbers mean? You know, people don't talk Male that way anymore. People, I guess, king, people don't use king snake anymore and talk that way. Where, oh yeah, I've got a a one two point one. The only Nobody reason knows what that means anymore. The only reason I know what it means is because James talks like that sometimes. All the time. And I, I've yeah. had to learn over the years. It's, it's, but that's, yeah, well, I just I used to see it everywhere, and it's like now nobody does that anymore. Mm-hmm. That's something they should say in the hobby. It makes it easy. Like just gotta learn. Like there's there's terminology. One point two. One point two is a trio. Yeah. Two point one is a reverse yeah. trio. Yeah. Or, and then, then there's so the third number, the unknown. last unknown. number is an unsex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unsex. For all those damn green and tree people python people. I don't know what that means anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah, people that, just don't know what that means anymore. Well, we we are going to teach them. People, you're going to learn. Learn how to refer to males and females. Although maybe they'll be upset that we assume the God. chameleon's gender. They could He's be upset. adorable. Oh, the picture? He's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? I, I see it on Katie's phone. <laughs> Old ass little. Pull it up on pull up on yours on your computer. Oh, okay. I pull it up on the computer. Yeah. So that the eleven people watching can see this adorable little chameleon. They'll yeah, enjoy. so that everybody can see this little old man in a he baby body. Does look like an old. Yeah, man. if you've never seen a Parsons chameleon baby, they um. And how old is this baby? Because this thing's as big as his hand. Uh, wait. How old is he now? Or how old was he in the picture? They get big. He's probably five or six months old. Yeah, I'm going to pull it up. For anybody that's watching on online, you can see I'm going to go ahead and share this with you. Her wrinkly old ass chameleon, which isn't old. He's so that's a baby. That's a baby Parsons. They are, they're like, they end up being like chihuahuas. <laughs> they're like chihuahua uh, size. That's like the, the size he is in that picture is basically a full grown adult female panther chameleon. Yeah. That's crazy. And honestly, like yeah that's, that's what i was thinking that's I was like, like fat i'm like jim is not that much bigger than that i mean he's a little bigger, he's bigger than that but he's yeah, long, but a little no. longer but no i mean because full grown yeah. they're where are they're also a madagascar species too right yeah yeah so yeah they only come from madagascar giant chameleon small island i say small ish island <laughs> but i think they can get a male can get like up to four three four pounds you know that we know of you four know four pounds of chameleon oh. that's a lot of chameleon do what so four pounds of chameleon yeah, a is lot a lot. Of chameleon. uh darren wants that's to know <laughs> darren wants to know do you breed meller's chameleons at all no we don't no they do there not, is darren. a reason but i don't know if lee wants to get into the we reason. will not no, he does not we will not his head. <laughs> jeff frederick just <laughs> we in. will not get into the reason <laughs> Fair enough. Jeff wants to know how long is the incubation or gestation for a Parsons? So incubation is about two years. Ish. Jesus Christ. I do remember that now. Yeah, that's fucking that's like ridiculous. The length of an elephant's gestation. Yeah. Don't they yeah, aren't they pregnant for like I mean, 18 months? You know, yeah. a panther chameleon, though, you know, can go six to twelve months. You know, that so it's still long too, but yeah, Parsons is double. You know, it's God. like to be two years. Some people have gotten them a year and a half, you know, but yeah, you're, you're looking at two years before, and then you've got to raise those babies just like, you know, the rest of, you got to raise them up until you can sell them. See, that's, I lose interest. I don't lose interest. I get impatient at the end of three months for my boas and I still have like another like few weeks. I could not imagine having to keep my interest for two years. A lot of shit happens in two <laughs> what years. What it is is you know that amazing stuff is growing. I mean, yeah, that is kind of cool. <laughs> I, my my problem would be after two years, I'm seriously committed to this baby, and I don't know that I want to get rid of it. You do when you see the price well, tag for it. Oh, okay. I don't know what the price tag is. <laughs> more than what we more than Jim. I, well, I figured that much. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're looking at yeah, it's about two grand. What's the lifespan on that thing? Well, so the lifespan can pass. I'm thinking, what are we up to now in captivity? Somebody's got one that's 25. Oh, shit. 20. Oh, so that's so, a much so, better investment. So much, well, because, are like, you going to say much better investment than your own one. animal that you own? Well, that's I mean, stuff. I, that was one of the reasons. <laughs> that, he's like, it's a much better chameleon than panthers. They die way too early. Well, that's why I never <laughs> wanted to get one before, because I didn't want to pay a large amount of money for something back when they used to be have. like over a thousand dollars they were and you know and i know people that are like well your guinea pig's only gonna live for five years i'm like yeah which is why if i get it i'm gonna get it from a breeder so i get it as a baby and i have the most possible time with it i'm not buying it from a pet store where i have no clue how old it is yeah yeah well and i mean you know five to seven years you know on the panther is it's not it's not like it used to be like in the 90s when people were getting chameleons and it was a six-month animal. That literally is what it was, you know, because husbandry is better now and lots and supplements and all that stuff. But, you know, five to seven years, it does suck, you know, that you – and, yeah, I tell people all the time, if Madagascar completely shuts down, I will tell you a different, a different story about it. But if it doesn't shut down and we can continue to get 
what we need and for, you know, breeding and everything and genetics, don't ever spend a thousand dollars on a panther. You know, don't spend a thousand dollars on it because yes, it is a five to seven year animal. You know, it's yeah. not, it doesn't have that much monetary value in its lifespan. But now Parsons, you know, they're considered they're the holy grail chameleon. You know, it's the goat. It's, it's a dog. You know, a it's a small it's dog a on a branch. It's the size of a small goat. What I've read. <laughs> so, but yeah. Yeah. Darren in the chat. It's, it's, that's all. Darren said he wants to it's know the story. It's a whole other level. <laughs> Darren wants to know the story behind Meller's breeding now. Darren, we'll find it out later, and we'll see if Lee wants to tell you, and then we'll have Lee come on and tell the story about Br Meller's. But we'll save that for later. Yeah, there, there, there is a story, but yeah, Lee, you know, as soon as I started to say it, he started shaking his head. So uh, a Meller's chameleon killed Lee's life. parents. And, James, no. This and is not acceptable. This he's really angry at Meller's chameleons now. No. A Meller's chameleon shot them in the street for their car. James. They're evil ass chameleons. Stop it. You're going to get us put on some list. I'm sure I already am. Uh, <laughs> Jeff said he thinks to go back to the Parsons, uh, you have to do some things with their temperatures within that time period too, while they're incubating, changing temperatures, I guess. Yes. Well, if you remember whenever we talked to Primo on the podcast, I don't remember yesterday, Amanda. So I definitely don't like I record <laughs> these things. So maybe one day where, I go back and listen and do remember them. We're on spring break. I didn't get up till noon today. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there are several little tricks, you know, and things that you do have to do to make them hatch. Because whenever we first had, you know, Parsons in captivity, no one could breed, get the, well, no one could get the eggs to hatch. You know, they could breed them, but nobody could get the eggs to hatch. And it is, it's a bunch of different diapauses at different stages. You know, it's, I think it's two, you know, it's two diapauses at different stages yeah. in the eggs, which... We're not there yet, but you know, ours are just babies. But I, I know what diapause is there, because I had to breed those fish eggs over last summer. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there were different diapause stages, and it's those different developmental stages. For those that want to learn new terminology, look at uh, you. It's different. They, they look different in different stages. Uh, like our new. Yeah. And, and when they first, people were trying to say when they were first trying to get them to hatch, they were using like peroxides and all kinds of different geez. things to spray on the eggs to try to get them to hatch. You know, that's back when egg trading was okay and it was because we were trying to see who could get them to hatch because nobody could yeah. they would sit in the incubator for years you know and they would never mold they wouldn't do anything they just so would never hatch and that was when trading eggs was okay it was like hey you're another breeder you may know something i don't know why don't you try to get them to hatch yeah because the, the diapause stages and, are weird they, they reach a diapause and then they basically can sit there until certain conditions are mm -hmm. matched outside the egg and then they'll jump into the next stage. And so that's the problem here mm -hmm. is, is they, they got them to one point and we weren't doing the right thing to get them to jump to the next point. Um, how big is an egg from a Parsons? How big is a what? An egg. An egg. Um, didn't he show us a picture? Primo has a picture of one. God. It kind of looks like Amanda, a Amanda, you know, I don't remember stuff. <laughs> I'm talking to Lee. <laughs> I'm talking to Lee because he's making me walk. I'm walking around my koi pond right now. And he's like looking at me and he's giving me hand signals over there, smoke signals and stuff <laughs> on what to say. And I'm like, you do realize that I sound like Miley Cyrus with a sinus infection when I talk. <laughs> I have an extremely, I have an extremely hardcore Southern accent that, that is bad. very nasally because I am a smoker and I have allergies. <laughs> and you so know, yes, we, that's not like Miley Cyrus with a sinus thing. We finally started to kind of clear up and dry up our sinuses, and then today all three of us have been crazy again. So I guess we're oh, all gonna have it, to take yeah. some Sudafed or something before we go to the rodeo tomorrow because we're gonna uh, be I outside. Live on <laughs> yeah, I live um, on Flonase. <laughs> Y'all aren't coming to the show but, yeah. next weekend, are you? No, Lee has an eye car test that he has to take. It's like I don't know whatever loser. that certification is for his welding at work. What a loser! It's mandatory. <laughs> so, how you really yeah. feel about it, Amanda? <laughs> uh, so Jeff says trading eggs well, like killifish fish breeders. Yeah, so trading eggs is one thing, and current day selling panther chameleon eggs is a completely different horrible thing. Yes, 
that's that's a whole nother level of but that was i think the catalyst for why it became okay because they were like oh look they're shipping them sending them here 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 they're you know and they're not dying and blah 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 of course they weren't hatching but you know they weren't dying so the eggs weren't molding over or any of that and i think that is honestly the catalyst to it that and there was a species of i think it was some type of leaf tail gecko or something that was people were trading eggs with i don't know <laughs> you know the controversy behind that i'm trying to look up. Let's say what are you looking at i went to primo's uh instagram and i was just trying to find egg pictures <clears throat> oh the egg picture yeah he did post a picture i don't know did he post it on his instagram later his facebook oh he posted it on his facebook oh what the hell now i'm looking in the wrong place uh, I, I blame lee it, it looks kind of like a quail egg like a small quail egg is about the size of a parson egg so new parsons that means you'll be able to breed them in like 10 years so that'd be fun <laughs> No, they'll reach sexual maturity because our females now are probably almost sexually mature. And, of course, if in panthers, it's the other way around. You want to buy your male first, let him grow up before you get your female. Well, in Parsons, it's the male can start to breed the females while he's still smaller. And the females may be more accepting because he won't be as big. <laughs> and they'll be like, ah, uh, yeah, you're not as, you know, All right, I'm about intimidating to share. of a size. I'm about to share the uh, the like golf ball. Oh crap! What did I do? Hold on. I'm going to share the egg picture from Primo's Facebook, and it's, it's, it's the size of a golf ball. Look at this thing. That is for anybody watching. I mean, that's a huge. That's that's a chameleon egg. That that's huge. For anybody that's ever if you've ever seen like a panther chameleon, those eggs are so small. It's like a tic tac. Yeah, they they really are. It's They're, like it's like a it's like a swollen tic tac. Yeah, so that that part is crazy when you look at that next to a Parsons committee, which is like a it's like a huge quail egg. Mm -hmm. That oh man, that's crazy. Well, it's like you know, just imagine the size of the animal. You know, I mean, of course they can, you know, but they don't produce as large of a clutch like a veiled chameleon. You know, can have a hundred eggs each clutch. And if she gives you three or four clutches, you're looking at three or four hundred eggs, which is why they're in the pet stores, and that's why they're the way they are because they're insect mentality with their eggs yeah they have just tons and tons of eggs and then you end up with all those babies yeah it's one of those short Panthers, lifespans they don't have as many as that but then yeah parsons ain't gonna have that many either yeah you find those things that have short lifespans have a lot of babies and things with longer lifespans have less yeah. and so it's a uh... yeah and that's it yeah yeah i kind of like to guess tortoises too mm -hmm. but or uh you know mice, mice have so many babies because short lifespan tons of babies trying to make it but anyways that uh that's a crazy that's a crazy ass egg it's what so was, that's what we're doing yeah we are working on that well what's crazy even more is though, you you get that to happen in a year or so two three and then you have to wait another two years for it to hatch maybe like yep. that's that's the problem you get yeah. the eggs and then maybe you get them to hatch in two years or maybe you just have an egg that sits there and does nothing for two years yeah, we're looking at it's what it we're 2024 now, so 26, 27, probably 20, year 2028. Yeah, so all you ball python it's people up, who are like, up in 2028. <laughs> all those ball python people who are like, oh yeah, I got this baby and it's gonna be ready in six months to breed. Uh, try chameleons and see how your patience is for for Parsons chameleons. Yeah, exactly, because it's it's a whole nother level. That's it's crazy. a whole nother level of Dang. it. We were talking earlier, though. I don't know if you caught it earlier. We were talking with um, Lewis about you know people nowadays getting pets because they can't get dogs and cats and living in smaller homes that reptiles make great pets. And I and I said earlier, prior to meeting y'all, I would never have suggested this, but I think that for folks that have a limited amount of space and want a pet, family pet, that a panther chameleon like what we have with Jim would be amazing. There's a setup you can do in your living room with a cage, and they're not as hard as people will make them out to to be to take care of. Um, but I think I think that would be a great. Uh, it's hard for me to say first time pet, but I don't think it would be a bad first time pet as long as they I'm do it be correctly. Honest, though, and well, and we got the Miss King, like he's yeah. like Lee suggested, and yeah. we did. That's, well, that's it. You know, everything. If you make it if you'll, the way. Yeah, said. make it easy, and it's gonna be easy. Make it hard, it's gonna be hard. That's. I mean, we sell a lot to you know first timers that have never even held you know a leopard gecko. I mean, they, they they don't even know anything. They just walk into a reptile show and they're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, you know, and it's like, yeah. I mean, 
you can do this. Let's keep it simple. Let's learn the animal. Once you learn the animal, let's go crazy. You want to go with a zoo enclosure? Go for it. Just like Darren you know, said in the chat, learn. don't give them plastic plants because that'll kill them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's going to kill them. You know? Mine's over there dying. I mean, we that, probably spent more money on those yeah. plants than we did the cage itself. I went a little But overboard. we do tell, because, I mean, the chameleon cages are really lightweight, you know, with the screen and everything. So we tell people, like, get you, a, like, a night stand or an end table. I think Ikea sells, like, a Face- Goodwill. Goodwill or Facebook Marketplace. Fit it. We found ours at Goodwill. I think I okay, paid, like, yeah. 10 I mean, that's what I'm it. saying. You know, quite, yeah, Facebook Marketplace even. Yeah. You know, a night stand, something like that. Somebody could easily pop that in their living room or, mm-hmm. you know, anything. and be able to have something and something that's awake during the day you know a lot of reptiles that we keep are nocturnal and it's just i don't know i feel, I think it's cool seeing something function and live life during the day when i'm awake well, instead of you know going into the room and then all the geckos are out you know when we talk about a nighttime. lot of times uh people have obese snakes because the only other than holding it the only time you get to really interact with your snake is feeding time and so people just want to always feed their snakes which can happen with again any other animal but with a chameleon that eats on a regular basis it's also a fun little thing you get to feed them every day or every other day and get to interact with them and mm-hmm. and, and so that's also a fun thing you get to do with them as well i panicked the other day i was upstairs and i because the podcast room door is open all the time and he's right on the other side of the door so you can see him from the top of the stairs and i couldn't find him and i'm like where the fuck mm. did he go he was pooping on the bottom of the cage that's why i didn't see him he was behind a plant pooping. I was like, oh, okay. And he says, I'm trying to get some privacy. <laughs> you just reached in to grab him like it was nothing. You scared the bejesus out of him. Well, he just let James know he was not a fan of that at all. He tried to bite him. I'm like, no, I always acknowledge him. Make sure he sees me. Make sure he's aware of what's happening. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, and that, that's what I tell somebody came up to us this weekend at a show and they said, um, they were like, Well, what do they do? I always and I looked at him and I was I was kinda hey, like buddy. I was like, What do you mean what do they do? You know, and he's like, Well, what can you do with them? And I'm thinking and at, he walked off after I, I don't know, I said something intelligent. And he walked away and I looked at Lee and I said, You know what? If you think about everything in this entire room right here, I bet you the chameleon is the most interactive and the most, you know, that you can do with. Hundred what, percent. What do you do with a snake? Yeah. What do you do with a snake? You, you know, it. what do you do with <laughs> a, even a leopard gecko? What do you do yeah. with a tortoise? You know, I mean, it's like to me, the chameleon, they are very, they notice you when you come into the room. You know, they come down from wherever they're at. Oh, you're going to feed me. On, you know, you can hand feed them. You know, you can walk around like a, with a parrot, you know, almost like a reptile parrot on your shoulder. Yeah. And for you anybody know, watching the video. They're more interactive than a lot of things. For anybody watching the video, you can see we're, we're holding them right now. You can hold them. They don't die. Which, Although I am afraid yeah, they don't sometimes die. he's going to just like dive like a crested gecko. So you can see how beautiful. Well, and then, I get asked. I, we, we get asked that at, at shows too. They're like, well. Can't you just like if you hold them, they'll stress and die, right? And I'm thinking if that was true, Chandler would have been dead yeah. like a million times. You know, it's funny that you say <laughs> that though, is I had always been told you can't hold them too much, they'll stress out. He freaking loves being yeah. out and about and climbing around. Well, and that's the- it, you know. And I, they're very, they notice everything in their environment, they're very curious. Yeah. Well, in the, in the, I well, don't I don't know where that came from. And the reason I got freaked out when I couldn't find him is, and I don't even know that we ever talked about this on the podcast. I we know did. I called you and Lee about it because it freaked me out. But the the bottom of his cage where the tray comes out hadn't gotten latched, and he pushed it yep. open and was like clear across the room on top of the. Uh, these yeah, curtains. Curtains. Curtain rod, it was like, about like curtain rod yeah. and so that's what i thought was oh my god i didn't lock the bottom of the cage again or joe who had changed the puppy pad for me says what we have on the bottom well, of this also i have to say for anybody watching live if you can see we're, we're we're holding jim on camera the camera doesn't do any any justice to his colors the dark red is actually a bright red and it's sometimes orange and he's got very yellow belly he looks dark on the screen but he is much yeah, brighter. He, he looks good. Dang. He looks good. And that's it. We sold one and he just got shipped today and he got to the owner and the new owner said he, he messaged us and he said, 
oh, he looks so much better than he did in the pictures on Morph Market. And I'm like, I know, you know how hard it is to take a picture always. of a chameleon. Oh, red and reds. <laughs> Any reds or pinks are always hard, especially some of these oranges that show up. He's uh, starting to get a little Yeah, chunky. I would literally be taking a picture of him, and I'm looking, I'm moving my head back and forth and looking at the phone and looking at the animal, and I'm like, that doesn't even look the same. No. Nope. Like, you can't capture their true uh-huh. colors. Well, and it's striped on the side, for those that can't see, it's a, a really pretty light blue color down the side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it almost looks lit up. Yeah. And then they change colors yeah. from night. To, like, his nighttime colors are, when he, when he goes to sleep, he is orange and yellow. James, uh, the pajamas. Yeah. we started feeding our dubia colony is finally up and off the ground and doing great since we got the dubia food from okay. you guys. And so James, because yeah. I don't do roaches, you know this about me. I've got to say, James will, James will put them in the cup and then I'll I'll feed him. And y'all's food, I, I've okay. never seen my roach. I've I've fed roaches for a long time when I had my first colony. I fed them like a high quality like puppy food, and and they'd eat it. But when I put this food in there, they come running out from underneath the egg crate and go crazy for it. Yeah. Yeah, like with the lights on and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they come up and. <laughs> yeah, he'll put like know, three or four. It. Yeah, he'll put three or four in the cup for me and then I can feed him. As long as I don't have to put him in the cup, then I'm good. The problem is when he grabs two at the same time and then he starts to chew them and then drops a half eaten one on the ground. Yeah, Although, half one. Yeah. He does have a horned worm living in the bottom of his cage. Yeah. Uh, we keep puppy pads in the bottom of the cage and this horned worm is just living down there eating chameleon poop. Uh, and well, he, whenever he turns for into him his, to eat his it, moth, he and, can eat him then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe he'll turn into a moth. Well, that's funny because the there's tons, there's tons of hornworm poop in the bottom of the cage. Now, for anybody that's never seen a hornworm poop, it is shaped kind of like a pumpkin. I don't know. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's got a. It's all shaped the same. Their poop is the same shape every time a hornworm poops. We we call them grenades. Yeah. They yeah. literally look like a little hand grenades. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the poop. We always thought they looked like little hand grenades. So, yeah. Right, Hornworm poop's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it yourself. is. So funny. He shifted the camera and now we can't see his cage on screen. He's like, what the hell? You know what? Man? I think with their the pajama <laughs> colors that you like right. so much, I have a theory on pajamas. I think that that is the chameleon's true colors because mm-hmm. it's the only time that they are not there so like you know they're not thinking about anything right when they're asleep. they don't have it like a mood or yeah. you know the temperature or all that it's like i bet you pajamas is the chameleon's true color i felt bad a couple nights ago i had been cleaning in the podcast room and i accidentally left the light on and then i came back upstairs oh. and realized that his lights had gone off but the overhead lights in the room were still on yes yeah, so he's still awake and he was still mm-hmm. very much awake i was like i'm so sorry and i just turned the light off and pulled the door <laughs> i know he's like i cannot sleep with this felt, light on i didn't so, think that it would make that much of a difference but i looked at him and i'm like oh you're not even in pajamas I, yet like, I, I do want to throw this out to darren because we had darren on on our 100th episode our 200th episode mm-hmm. and he only has two snakes yeah darren you should get a chameleon <laughs> then he'll have three reptiles. Add one more reptile. <laughs> you should get but I it's just, not a snake. I will, like I said, I would suggest for anybody that has thought about doing a panther chameleon, talk to the Reddies. Go go find Reddies oh, yeah, for us. Yeah. Talk to them. And if you set up the enclosure and the cage and everything, it's really like look, it's really just I come in and I and I feed them. There's nothing else I have to do. We change out the we change out the water jug for the miscan. And, and look, you can obviously do a more net. We're, we, I know we talk all the time how we get shit on for plastic plants. I'm not anti planted enclosures i'm all for it it's just not mm-hmm. making my keeping I, it would not be enjoyable for me to keep the animal Look, the only thing i've and kept alive is it. my i have a i have an a thanksgiving cactus downstairs because my nieces wanted to buy me a christmas cactus but it's actually the thanksgiving one um i have one of those that i've kept alive for like the last year and a half and i have an oh, african wow. violet but i can't get it to reflower like I, I don't do well with live plants. I, I don't. I do. Like people yeah. will tell you, if you can keep a plant alive, you can keep a kid alive. No, 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 <laughs> no. no, 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 no. no they're not the same. Yeah, or or like <laughs> get a plant before you get a dog. No, I need live things. Yeah, no, like, no. Yeah, because uh, yeah. Well, and that's it. I mean, and it's it's what is for you too. You know, it's like yes, the animal. As long as you're meeting the needs, which you are, or mm-hmm. he would be dead. Yep. You know, then yeah, we've had I him mean, for... you're meeting you're meeting the needs. And if you're happy, okay. Yeah, we got him in Brian no. Did we get him in Brian years? College Station last year? When did we pick him up? 
Yes, yeah. Yes. It was it was No, we uh, drove to Austin. No, it was Austin. That's right. We, it was we, Austin. But we, we talked about it. We, he was there. We put, we put a, a deposit down at right. College Station. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that way yes. we could get and the then cage and you all the got stuff him in Austin, in Austin. because yes. that was when we had yeah, the doctor, Dr. Rob Cove mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. for the picture. That was it's been almost yeah. a year though. Yeah, when he's born in your birthday. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, so well, we thought about we thought about coming back and talking to you when it's been a year. Yeah. You know, about your whole you know, your whole. I can't believe we've had him for almost a year. Chameleon alive for a year. He, that uh, is, you know, an accomplishment, apparently. Yeah. Well, like, and so, and and Darren said he was actually thinking about. I, I would strongly suggest it if you're if you're thinking about another reptile, and you want something that's different. Uh, and I would suggest different, a little bit more interactive. Yeah. And I would suggest the Reddies because, look, I've seen a lot of chameleons at different shows over my 20 years of keeping. And so many of them are sold so small. I know we talk about you want to have a long time with your animal and they don't live that long. But look, we got him at three months, four months old. No, he was more like six uh, months old. Six months old. Got him six or seven. Yeah, he was. He was because more it was robust, almost. Y'all wanted the wanted yes. your birthday. Uh, yes, because he and I have the same birthday. And, and y'all sell them yeah. much larger than I see other chameleons for sale. Yeah, because we want to make sure there is a great foundation and you're not going to have problems. Yeah, and they're super established. And, so, and Darren asked, it's, it's, he asked how old are they? three months and 14 grams is the minimum. And so when you feel, so that's around when you feel safe to ship one, right? At three months or so? It three months old or 12 to 14 grams would be the minimum. And we weigh every single one of them before we even post them to be available on a website. Well, and what I really liked about it too is like James, everybody that's watching just saw him handling Jim. Jim is totally used to it. And we don't handle him every day. Mm -hmm. You know, no, and we, no. we could even probably handle him more often than we do. And, and he would be fine with you it. Could, um, you could I've hold seen... him. I mean, look at Chandler. Chandler has gone. He did a uh, a show run one time of six weekends in a row. And that is shows. their Mbonja adult male, right? Yeah, that is the yes, an Mbonja male that goes to all the shows. With he's, a, us. he's a big, and, pretty you know, blue I, male. Yeah, and I raised him, you know, to make sure he was handleable. I can put him in a toddler, a two-year-old pan that will grab his back and poke him, and he is not going to react. Because I've raised him, I conditioned him to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's well taken care of. He's well fed before, after, during the shows, you know, so he stays feeling good. He's got energy. And, you know, he just, he does fine. And if, if, they died when you touch them. Chandler would be dead a thousand <laughs> times. Well, and that's what I love I mean, though is is that you do handle your chameleons. You do condition your mm -hmm. chameleons. You're you even showed me that you were like, look, if he starts huffing up at you, this is exactly how you fix it. Before we ever took him home, so I knew exactly what yep. to do whenever he was trying to be like, oh no, well, I'm look, the boss. I, I I scared him and reached in straight for him, <laughs> he and he did he did kind of do a bluff <laughs> a bluff thing with his mouth open at me. Yeah. But once we got him out, you saw he was he calm. Was he was fine. He realized you just well, startled it, yeah. him. That's all. And, and for anybody that's ever yeah, gone to a show, it. sometimes you do. Yeah, and I've seen stressed out chameleons at shows because oh, their colors yeah. are yeah. much different. Never seen and, that on Jim. Well, and their their eyes are closed. They're yeah. close and tight to the branches. They're not moving. You know, I, they're not eating. We feed every single baby at the expos that we're at. We feed Chandler. They're all sitting there tagging the crickets. Yep. If there was a problem, they wouldn't be eating. Mm -hmm. And pooping. I mean, I've it's seen, like a million poop also. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. They're pooping. They're eating. They're drinking. They're living. You I'm know, not. and I'm thinking if they were truly stressed out, they would not be eating because you're not going to eat if you're not comfortable. Yeah, I'm that that weird pet parent where I'm like, oh, he pooped. Let me make sure it looks like it's supposed to. Because if it, I'm like, that's how I know. Well, if and also, sick, just throw this out there: it's not normal. If you do decide to get a chameleon from the Reddies, go check out Viv Tech products for their LED UVB light bulbs. Yep. Use code Gumbo22 and save fifteen yep. percent of the plug. Just go do that. You're so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I get I you mean, some fear got... fuel. Yeah, we've. I mean, we've yes. Got check out the readies and get you some some roach food. Their feeder fuel is amazing. Yeah, it it's is got really about good. seven trillion ingredients oh, in it. We feed it to we feed it to superworms, crickets. I mean, mm -hmm. you can feed it to all I've kinds. Put it we in use it as superworm bedding. So, uh, yeah. Darren That's wants to know. He said, uh, "Just just knowing y'all from the podcast and being on here, he knows you ship safely." But he's just curious for himself: is it in a plastic container or a bag? Uh, what keeps them safe during shipping? 
do we are you asking if we ship them in a container or a bag? Yeah, how, how do you how do you ship them inside of okay, their box so and how all? We pack, yeah, how we pack them, of course, is in the you know the regular standard insulated box, and then we use polyfill, which is what is basically inside of your squishmallow. If you were to cut it open and pull out the stuffing, hey, hey, stuffed hey, animals. Hey, stuff. I'm not I'm not pulling out the stuffing of my Gila monster. You leave my Gila monster alone. <laughs> I have a whole box of polyfill in my garage. <laughs> yep. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just, you know, men don't always know what I'm talking about. So I try to tell him what's inside of a yeah. stuffed animal. If, if, we said, if we said batting, he would know exactly I, what we were I know what about. it is. It's the stuff inside of a cheap pillow. <laughs> yeah. The material that is inside of a stuffed animal is what we use as cushion. So it's all, we, you know, line the whole box with that. And then, of course, depending on the season, heat pack cryo pack whatever it needs and then the chameleon we are putting in smooth deli cup or not well they're not deli cups but the bigger cup so we don't use the bags and the reason why we Someone don't like the bags we did try the bags a few times it they seem to really rub their you know their body yeah. on the cloth uh, and yeah. it you know they'll come out of the bag sometimes and they'll have like black around their noses or around their feet or something where mm -hmm. they've been rubbing and the black is technically a bruise you know it's what they kind of bruise themselves from rubbing against the bag so we've noticed that those really smooth you know like bigger like snake cups that you see it shows yeah for you know like debbie sells them that's what we put ours in it's free plug for reptiles they seem to do reptiles to you if you're planning yeah. on shipping or buying shipping supplies check yeah. out reptiles to you i just just give me a Change plug. Just ship I just shipped a snake today in a reptiles yeah. to you box yeah. with my tag from reptiles to you. So anyways, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. That's what we do. Yeah. So there's the cup. Also, uh, another free plug uh, is, is for the, again, the feeder fuel. Here's a picture of the bag that I got from the readies. I just want to do a rundown of the ingredients. I think I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, but <laughs> this is the ingredients. We from, talked about it when we had Fadi on. Yeah. From one bag of food for your roaches. It, it's simply just food for your food. Uh, alfalfa, timothy hay, orchard grass, soybeans, dandelion root, dandelion leaves, calendula flowers, sunflower seeds, bee pollen, hibiscus flowers, rose flowers and leaves, rose hips, quinoa, pumpkin seed, buckwheat, rice bran, brewer's yeast, and spirulina. What uh, is that? Spirulina? Yeah. It's a, um, shit, I know that it, it's. Is it a plant? Mm, is it like a type of. Yeah, um, so it, it comes from the the ocean yeah it's like a it, it's it's algae yeah it's an algae oh, it cool. comes, it's like yeah like it's dried green algae. algae yeah you know, when you get, yeah it's algae so it's technically it's not a plant water. uh it's an algae algae aren't plants they're in, in kingdom protista for all y'all out there who don't know how to classify algae uh but yes if you're looking for food for your food check out feeder fuel i, I again I, I fed a lot of stuff to roaches and it's crazy how much they like this stuff and, and i know lee went insane when making this so i know it's going to be good because oh yeah he doesn't do anything simple oh yeah he we, he has been obsessing about that stuff for years we've always made it and we've just never you know produced it for you know purchase you know for anybody to buy we've only just made it for ourselves and everybody's like oh we need something that's a little bit better than you know like the three bean soup which is the most common one that's just ground up for you know crickets and stuff and this the reason there's so many ingredients and in what they are is because since we feed more nocturnal insects to our, you know, day loving animals, we decided, you know what, maybe if we will gut load with day food. Yeah. So that's why the, the flowers and stuff are in there. And you can use it for, again, because that's what grass hoppers would eat is day stuff, you know, stuff that blooms during the day. Um, I use it for roaches, but I know you can use it for crickets, grasshoppers, mealworms, uh, black soldier fly larvae, anything before you feed it to your animal. Feed them this. And go check out mm -hmm. Reddy's Reptiles and uh, in order you think of feeder fuel. Ready to rain for Ready's Reddy's Rainforest. My <laughs> bad. You know I know. Look, it's again spring break. I was going to say, maybe you need to eat soon. <laughs> That's true. I have not, I you eat. didn't need dinner before the fight. Maybe yet. I should eat some of this stuff. You know, my brain you probably got better. some good vegetables in there you need. I'm okay. I'm out. If it's got vegetables, I'm done. <laughs> not eating that. Uh, anyways, I have a little blender that you gave me for Christmas. I could just mix it up in your milk. Just start eating feeder fuel. <laughs> Maybe it'll fix my brain. Maybe. But, oh, 
Uh, someone called earlier. I, I apologize for someone that just that called in a little bit ago, uh, and I sent you a voicemail. Oh, okay. I, I, my bad to whoever that was. Yep, you can get them now. <laughs> but uh, Amanda, but I called. I'm. Thank you for calling, and and yeah. it, was a, it was a good conversation about <laughs> chameleons. Was. Anytime we talk about chameleons, again, yep. we we there's proof we haven't killed them yet. He's still alive. They're great. I also have yep. to say, uh, I know we should, we'll talk to you in a year if we're gonna really yes. find this out. Yeah. I also have to give some credit to uh, the Mister because I did realize when I came up here that we let the drug run dry today. We like, there's no weed. Yeah, I did this job, and I heard it trying to go, and I was like, crap! So I put it in the other jug that had next to it that had water. It still worked. It was great. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that you can like some of the cheaper Misters and stuff. If you let them run dry, the motor burns up and it, it can break. Oh. But I talked to um, our friend Joe. Also, he told me, yeah, sometimes it, it runs dry, gets to switch it over, and hasn't burned one up. And I was, I was worried. We'll go get. Well, I've got uh, two other empty What's water jugs. Higher jug, higher jug there. I just. We'll, okay. no, we'll take. It had water yesterday. I did not have water today. It's fun. But, anyways, Amanda, <laughs> thanks for coming on. We will talk to you later. Yep. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye. Okay. All righty. Uh, so we need to get a question out for for our giveaway our for giveaway. the Lego. Also, if you may want, we got a few minutes left. If you may want to call in, got anything to throw in there? Feel free to call in again at six six two four snakes. Uh, but yeah, our giveaway this is going to be a Lego set. I know some of y'all don't do Lego, but uh, it's a oh, we got a phone number. Oh, there you go. Let's see who it is. Hold on one second. The not knowing part is a little. <laughs> I'll be able to listen to the show. Oh. Yeah, man, you know, the area in front of Denver City Hall, you know, where they refurbished that. What? You see what I'm saying? Oh, we got another call. Think... Yeah. Uh, call 662 nine, four, 25, What's the name? Where you call? What is happening? I have no We're going to hang up on that. <laughs> I don't know if that was. If that was one of y'all, I'm very confused. Uh, but I don't think it was. That was odd. Somebody. If I hung up on you, I apologize. I don't apologize. I do apologize, but I don't. I do. I don't, I do. I don't know what's happening. Anyways, uh, even if you don't, uh, can we post the link yeah. for Girl Scout? We will 100% post the link for Girl Scout. We we'll do that, we'll do that right now. now. I, it, I didn't want to post it on the podcast page because I didn't want people to be like, no, nah, I do it. I don't care. Oh, my, okay. It's our podcast. If, uh, you, but, if you buy 10 boxes or more, you do get a free flat rate shipping. That's I do want to say, though, for folks that don't do like, if you've never done it, it's very therapeutic sometimes to just sit there and like zone out and just follow the instructions and put together something like, it's great. Jeff, we're going to post it and, and we can send it to We'll get it to you a million different ways. But if you want to buy cookies, have at it because I need cookies gone out of my house. Oh, any other, I think any other reptile stuff? Let's see what I got going on in the snake room. I've got, so I went to go pull a male to feed him. He's been with a female boa for a while. I know it's not like another call in show. It was very weird. I don't know. We're the only one that should have that number. So it's Google, it's a Google number. It was very weird. But uh, so I went to go pull a male boa that I've had with a female for a while. And, they, and they've and they hooked up and off and on and off and on. And he needs to eat. So I was going to pull him. So I pulled out a rodent, a rat last night. And I was like, all right, let me go pull him. And as soon as I go upstairs, yeah, he's hooked up to the female again. So last time I checked on him, though, he had let go. So I'm going to go ahead and pull him tonight and finally feed him his rat. But uh, timing. God, the timing on those guys is horrible. Uh, nothing else really going on. This I, I shipped out a snake today to someone in. Uh, I didn't know there was a Jacksonville, Texas, but now I do. So you have been doing something different with your shipping boxes instead of taping the oh. labels and so they, signage. There's a, there's a, uh oh, there's a guest. Is it the same? I don't know. We're gonna find out because it just shows this number. Here we go. Oh. Da, da, da. Let's see. Thank you for calling in. Hello. Who is this? Hello. Can I help you? This is McDonald's. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know who that was. Anyways. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. It's, this whole phone and things going to be fun. Um, I was saying something and then the McDonald's call threw me off. I forget what it was. Oh, That's a labels. great plan. We should give away Girl Scout cookies. That's true. We could do that. Good plan. We could do that. We could do that for with the uh, Lego. And get some Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. Whole family night, eat some Girl, Girl, Girl Scout cookies, cookies and Lego. It's got to be a robot spam. One. Hello. 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 James Lewis. This is James Lewis. Jeff Frederick. Jeff. There we go. Okay. <laughs> 
It's such a weird thing. I gotta. I, I gotta didn't know with... what was gonna happen. Like I never know when it rings. Now first it's this... McDonald's, and then it's <laughs> another it's, show. It's an actual person. <laughs> I figured you guys had enough bombs tonight. With that. Oh goodness! <laughs> How's it going, Jeff? Good man. Hey, I'll give away twenty bucks of Girl Scout cookies. That's Send me your Venmo and or PayPal or whatever. Yeah, I, I'll message you. I will have Katie set that up. That is awesome. We will do that for this month. So someone can win Girl Scout cookies. That's you cool. know what we'll have them do? We'll just tell them. Oh, <laughs> look at her face. She's we'll like, have them. Oh. The question will be, "What is your favorite flavor Girl Scout cookie?" So the thing is, though, is that we need to do. You've got to get this podcast out like in the next day or two. I'll get it out and tomorrow. We'll get it posted tonight. Or tonight. I'll do it tonight. You post the question now. Or just, cookie season ends in two right weeks. Now. Yeah, we can do, post the question now. Yeah, and and we'll say that they can win. Okay. And then we'll and we'll do and then you'll send Jeff yeah. the information. Yeah. For everybody, listen, Jeff, live answers. Yeah. yeah, Jeff is the uh, the man behind our awesome logo. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, now you do. <laughs> Shows now him. you, know. you yeah. talk about him all and the time. <laughs> But I, I never Little put two and two together. But he's also the one who did my Simply Stickers logo. No, you need real food. He's also the one who at some point is going to help out Travis Wyman with his god-awful logo. We've Sorry. got some ideas together for Travis already. So, god, yeah, my, yeah. my daughter was like holding up a package of Girl Scout cookies through the door and I needed her to eat real food before she just ate a bag of cookies. I will say, I as of today, I've only eaten four total cookies this Girl Scout cookie season. Not boxes, but no, individual cookies. cookies. I'm proud of you. Only four. Actually, I've actually that's impressive. Like, I haven't either. I crack a box of Samoa's and tag along and they're gone. Well, that's I've been good box. not to open a box on my own. If I open a box on my own of um of the peanut butter patties, peanut butter patties, or, or they're also tag-alongs, not tagalongs, yeah, I'll eat the entire thing. Um, oh, for sure. Like tagalongs, I took a box with me to work and I put them out on the table and I told my employees, I was like, look, I want one or two cookies from this because I'm craving it, but you guys got to save me for myself. Yeah. We'll see. Which obviously, wasn't difficult. They were gone within five minutes. A high school buddy of mine from marching band is actually, uh, and for anybody out here that might know this band or not, there's a band called Government Mule. Um, the lead singer Government Mule was also a guitar player for the Almond Brothers. But uh, my buddy is actually the bass player for their band, and so he was in town, and so we took him one. We we should have took him way way more. We took him one we thing of cookies, taken way more cookies. Uh, and then, like the whole crew ate them before they even went on stage I felt that night. So bad. I like he didn't. He like shared his. I'm like we should have taken way more than just one box. I felt bad, and it was funny. We went to go into the concert, and the woman's like, "You can't bring these cookies in." I'm like, "Well, they're, they're for the bass player." I was like, "The bass player is expecting these, so I'm gonna need this to make it to him." Mm-hmm. So she took them to him. He got them. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, these things are going to disappear. If okay, I just so here. Darren says peanut butter is his favorite, but peanut butter with or without chocolate because there's two. Yeah, because Jeff and I are talking about tag alongs. That's the peanut butter wrapped in chocolate. But then there's also the peanut butter sandwich cookie. So. All right. I posted. Oh, one. I didn't know about the sandwich cookie. Yeah, it's an oatmeal cookie with a peanut butter filling on the inside. They're th- it's a thick cookie though. Like it's one of those like. It's like an Oreo. But no, like when you bite into an Oreo, it's not like. You know how peanut butter sometimes if how it this go for it the, the how it feels in your mouth yeah is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say it's just really <laughs> thick in your mouth yes it is <laughs> it was, yeah it's a little oh, salty in there it, it does get a little <laughs> salty it's... you know how peanut butter makes your mouth feel like <laughs> stuck together other things can do the same thing. anyways Darren said with chocolate <laughs> was what he liked that's the only way to eat them it's with chocolate. With chocolate. Darren, you got to go for tagalongs. That's that's where it's at. Tagalongs where it's at. Tag-along. I like the lemon cookies. Those are good. The lemonades. Yeah, my partner, but my not the lemon up. The there's there's two she bakers. Like the too, and I'm like, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> that's the one of the best cookies. It's a traditional. It's very plain. Classic. You cannot go wrong with a butter shortbread cookie. You I mean, it's what it. comes with the sewing kit, right? Like the the blue <sighs> pin. No, those are sugar cookies. The problem That's with those, different. so I love those. Those are one of my favorite. I love those but cookies. I also despise coconut. And every now and then you can tell they use coconut in those cookies because you can get a little bit of plastic bite in your cookies because that's what oh, yeah. But yes, dear, and the red box are the tag along. So those are the good ones. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Everybody yeah, learns the so colors. There's, there's two bakers, and one of them has the lemonades, and one of them has the lemon ups. And the lemonades, it's a oh. cookie with the lemon it, the lemon flavor icing on the bottom of the cookie and that's my favorite one that's the one we have they used to do one was like a little 
It was lemon. It was like a little nugget of a cookie covered a, in like a, a powder sugar. Demi circle tea cookie. Oh, yeah, that was good. That, that was good. called the Savannah Smile. That shit was amazing. I had girls in my troop that like went into mourning when they discontinued that cookie. Oh, that was like such good legitimately cookie. cried when we told them that cookie was not coming back. It was bad. Oh, wow. Well. It was bad. Our daughter hey, was one wasn't of those. It like the, the Girl Scouts' birthday last week or something? March. It's actually today, March 12th. Is it? Mm hmm. Oh, I forget how can. old they are now. Buy some Girl Scout cookies. That's right. Pro tip, everybody. Grab a box of them and throw them in your freezer. Yes. Find them in six months. Yes, I always, I sometimes I buy a case. Every, like there's been several years where I buy a case and I just put the whole, whole case in the freezer so that throughout the year I have cookies. They're also great if you freeze the Thin Mint and then crunch them up and sprinkle them over vanilla ice cream. That shit is amazing. Oh, that sounds good. That's how my daddy used to eat them. Uh, and Tim, I mentioned that one day, and James was like, "Ooh, let's try this." <laughs> Timothy said Samoas and Tagalongs. I just can't do Samoas because I don't like coconut. I don't like the plastic the coconut. coconut. I don't like thin mints though because I don't like mint. I don't like mint normally, but I like it in thin mints. I've had a lot of people tell me that it's different. that it's different in the yeah. thin mint cookie. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like you're eating toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Which is my yeah, problem. that's yeah, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Exactly. So which ones have we not talked about? We've talked about both peanut butters. We talked about the thin mint. The Coconut. We talked about the shortbread. There's a couple. Like, you get the. Um, don't give me a good fucking fat. I'll name them all off. <laughs> well, we've well. So our so the last two is where it depends on your baker, because we have There's a s'mores the lemon. one. The s'mores is with the baker we don't have gotcha. because I ordered s'mores cookies from a Girl Scout in Louisiana and had my mom bring them to me because I wanted that cookie. We have toastiers over here, we which have, is like eating a cookie that is cinnamon toast crunch. Cinnamon toast crunch. Um, oh. My dad likes those with his coffee. <laughs> um, so oh, yeah, in June of every year. To the top. <laughs> so Darren, the Girl Scouts near you sell their cookies in June. Or does he save them? Or do you save them for Timmy's of the Adventure them. Fools? The Adventure Fools. Those things are like super dense. So like I can only eat one of them. So my daughter has a really cool selling method for those, and she's actually this is what she how she eats hers. She takes them because they're a crispy cookie; they're harder. She puts them in the microwave for like 15 seconds and the brownie gets softer and the caramel on the inside gets gooey and that's how she eats the adventureful cookies and when she tells people that's how she eats them they're like i'll take a box and she sells them see darren saves them darren's smart it's like christmas in july except it's girl scouts yeah. in june well the thing is is not all not all girl scouts sell at the same time of the year oh really no like there's and I'm so glad I'm not, we're not in that area, but there's some areas that sell like in the month of December for Christmas or, Ooh. and like those are hard sells because people are spending money on Christmas yeah, and they don't want to spend them on Girl Scout cookies. Um, there's some that sell cookies yeah. in September. So it, it really just depends on where you are. Do -si -dos. Do -si Dos and peanut butter sandwiches are the same thing. That's right. That's not a trademark name. So, like, Thin Mint is a trademarked Girl Scout so it's, name. And both bakers. Both bakeries are called Thin Mint. It's so a the, confusing thing. Oh, wow. The Trefoils or Shortbread Cookie is also trademarked. The, both the recipe and the name is trademarked. Yeah, it's a weird thing. You would think that Girl Scouts owns all of it. They don't. But they don't. Mm -mm. And so that's why if you buy, like, peanut butter patties versus Tagalongs, they're going to taste slightly different. To me, it's not enough of a difference. But it's two different bakers. But it's two different bakeries, which is why the name is different. But they're both in the red box. Yeah, and they look the same. So, Timothy, that's what Katie was talking about earlier. There's two different bakeries for the lemon one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, two different lemons. Yeah, so the ones that has Adventure Fools have the lemonades. Which have the lemon icing on the outside. On the bottom of the yeah. cookie. And then the lemon ups. I'm going to Google it. I think the lemonades, I like the lemonades a little better. They have a little bit more of a lemon flavor with that icing being on the outside. I know this has now become a uh, critiquing Girl Scout cookies. Uh, so the lemon <laughs> up. Darren says you're going to have me traveling the country for cookies all year. I know, right? It's a great road trip there, Darren. Just uh, <laughs> Google it. Girl Scout, uh, the trip. USA website, they actually, yeah. they actually give you web, they give you locations for cookie booths. So you can Google the cookie they, booths in your area and it'll tell you where girls are selling Darren, cookies in front of what business. Darren, jump on the bike and go buy cookies across the country. Um, yeah. There you go. Katie is not only your dealer, but your enabler. She's going to tell you how to get to I am all about supporting Girl Scouts. 
So the, the uh, yeah, so the limit and up. Your kid totally sold me on the adventure pool to that micro shit. I'm yeah, down. that's she sells out the the toast jays. We sold out of those like those go right literally away. the first. They have day. like a they have a, a sugary icing on the outside of it, and then it's just like it's like eating cinnamon toast crunch, but in a cookie, and it's it's and really good. So when I say we sold out of them, Joe, the way that we do it here with our troop is Joe gets an inventory. We say we want this many of this cookie, this many of this cookie, so on and so forth. And then those cases of cookies come to my house. And yeah, it's Joe's responsibility room. to sell them or I have to pay for them. Um, and so when she sells out of a type, I don't get more. I'm like, sorry, we're out. You have to buy them online from her if you want them. Um, so like you can buy them through her online website, which is the link I'll send you uh, or I'll post after the podcast is we've already gotten several people uh, posting uh, to your question here yeah uh you should have said it's for your giveaway i will i will but that's fine <laughs> i'll change it i'll fix it uh but you said so jason miller average said samoas because they're delicious uh, i disagree jason but it's fine uh laney said thin mints always thin mints are always a good way a good one and uh timothy said tag alongs because they are even better frozen or chilled i don't know that i've ever had frozen never had a frozen tag along Tagalongs and ice cream sounds pretty good too. That, that does, does sound, sound good. good. Or what? What is that ice cream y'all got down there? Blue something. Bluebell. Bluebell. Blue Bell. Oh, Bluebell. That's the one. Yeah. That is good ice cream. Bluebell. We ben. get Turkey Hill up here. Ben and Jerry's makes a lactose free, so lately they've been getting a lot of my money. I like Ben. <laughs> Bluebell doesn't make a lactose free ice cream. Yeah, Bluebell said, "Screw you guys! I can't have." I just take medication and then eat what I want. I so, will say. Can we back cookies for a second, though? Go for it. From the reptile hobby aspect, or from the reptile industry aspect, uh, they're still using palm oil. So, do you really want to go there? Because we can, because it's Let's actually go. they're actually not as not as much as they were in the past, and they're actually using let me let me find the website it's funny you say that because we were watching um <laughs> what were we watching it's like a big thing for me we were watching a cooking show or something and they were talking about how good it was like they were all all positive about palm oil and Katie and i both looked at each other at the same time like yeah that's not that good of a thing to brag no, about i don't remember uh, uh next level chef maybe oh oh amanda B's lactose free ice cream is the shit the mootopia mootopia for those of you that don't God. live in texas we have heb grocery stores here and i didn't know about it until i moved here also but they do make an amazing line of ice creams and they make one, they make lactose free for Katie, but they do make a non lactose free one that is, uh, uh, what was it? La, lime. What did I have the other night? Your key lime pie? Key lime pie. Oh, that shit was good. Okay. Yep. So back to the palm oil issue because this is because I worked at the zoo. This was a really big thing for me. So as of 2023, yeah, yeah. so last season, um, both bakers, originally it was just one of the two bakers, but both Little Brownie Bakers and ABC Bakers are now using the certified palm oil. Um, it's the Mass Balance RSPO certified palm oil. So now it's coming from companies that are, my words are not wanting to work because it's late. Um, it's like SB certified. Yes, and it's it's it it's um where it's resourced correctly. What is the word for that? Sustainably uh, sourced. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's just, it it's all from sustainable companies. So they're no longer using the stuff that they're not getting it to where it's bad for the environment because there's there's a way Oh my god, we should have had this conversation at the beginning of the podcast when my brain was functioning. Um there's a way I'm butchering this. There's a way to obtain palm oil. I don't want to use legally and illegally, but it's sustainable and not Clean sustainable. And yeah. Like, so the bakers as of 2023 are now getting from companies where, um, where it's responsibly and sustainably. Sold. Correct. There's actually this, it's like a two page, uh, because if, funny enough, it was actually a Girl Scout who was a senior, one of the oldest levels that was boycotting cookies. So instead of selling yeah, cookies, I mean, I would too. instead of selling cookies her last year for her gold award, which is the highest level award you can win as a Girl Scout, she did her project on palm oil and she did her project on how the Girl Scout company needs to change 
to be more responsible for our environment. And it's, it's huge. Now there's like documents online that you can find. It's, it's funny. I, um, I just edited your post just so they know it's a giveaway. And we already have five people that have commented. Although Thin Mint seems to be winning. You start talking about Girl Scout cookies and everybody gets interested. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's the round table of sustainable palm oil. And so as of 2023, both bakeries are 100% using certified palm oil products that are coming from the round table on sustainable palm oil. And so everything is coming from a company that is sustainably producing palm oil. Sounds good. Um, yeah. For those of you that, that don't. 2020 was the bit that I was missing. Like I yeah, knew that it, it was just, one bakery and it wasn't office. Yeah. It just started because that was actually, like I said, a couple years ago, it was like a huge thing. They actually gave us printouts. Um, it was when we were still in Louisiana. Yeah. Um, there, because that came up at the same time where people were given the Girl Scouts grief because they supported the Planned Parenthood situation. Yeah. We're going to skip mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, it, they <laughs> no, I know. they supported them for women to be allowed to get medical help that they need. Yeah, but uh, buy Girl Scout cookies, preferably uh, everybody from from us. They'll be gone. If you come to the show this weekend yeah. in uh, in South of Houston, we'll have Girl Scout cookies. And if you uh, go on Reptile Gumbo Podcast and tell us your favorite cookie and why, Jeff Frederick's going to help you win Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, I'll buy them for you. That's so cool. And then you can enjoy. Hey, uh, go ahead. I'm going to jump off here, guys. I want to apologize for talking over you. It is a little difficult to hear you on the phone. Just keep that in mind with the guests. So you may have to uh, speak up to them. But I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time. Good to know. Gotcha. Thanks. This first person that's ever told Katie to be right. louder. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Have a great night. You too. Best of luck with the chef. All righty. It's time to wrap this up. Yeah. Are you hungry? <laughs> I'm going to have hot dogs. <laughs> Maybe some Girl Scout cookies now that we've talked about Girl Scout cookies. No. Uh, thanks for everybody that called in. We're going to try and do this more often now that I've, I've figured out how to do it and hopefully it'll work a little better. But uh, yeah, so maybe our giveaway this month is cookies and then maybe next month is the Lego. Yeah, we'll do it all together. Oh, we'll do it all together. Um, again, go check out, just to know my free plugs here, Feeder Fuel from the Reddies at Reddies Main Forest. Get you some Feeder Fuel. This stuff is great for all your feeders. Uh, if check you need, out Lil's Shop of Lil's Horrors. Shop of Horrors. We had Lewis on earlier. Go check him out for all your feed. So you can buy roaches from Lewis. He'll ship those to you. And then you can buy food for your roaches from the Reddies. So help everybody. And then also you can check out LED UVB bulbs from... I was going to see if you were going to do it. Oh, I thought you were like having a brain spasm no, or something from VivTech. Do you know the code? Gumbo22. How much do you save? 15%. 15% over there at VivTech. See our friends at VivTech. <laughs> I don't know. I thought you were having a <laughs> no, I was going to see if you could, see if you could do it. Uh, <laughs> also, another free plug for our friends over at Focus Cube. They don't need enclosures. They don't really need help. Everybody buys them stuff already. But I think I finally found the plug to plug this back in so it lights up. Now I just got to find where the remote the, was on the bookshelf. Katie cleaned and now they can't no, find no, things. No, 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 no. I did not remove anything from the room. Sure if it was supposed to be in here, it stayed it in here. It was in here, but it's not here. Anyways, uh, check out all of our friends. Um, Darren, go watch those Chameleon Care videos. Go check out Ready's Rainforest on YouTube. They have a ton of videos uh, of how they set up things, how they do stuff. They do their really um, great videos. Again, I, I, I know we plug them a lot because they're our friends, but we also plug them a lot because they're they are great people. at what they do and they're good people. They wouldn't be our friends if they weren't good people. And good at what they do. Um, and look, we haven't killed this chameleon yet, and it's almost been a year, so. We'll have to look up when exactly we got him. I don't know. You all you can go back and find the pictures of when I posted the cage, and then I'll also find the people that, uh, you know, yelled at me oh, for me. putting plastic plants in there. Um, thank you all for listening. Next week, for hopefully our guest is healthy. Again, it was last minute thing. They couldn't help it. They were not feeling good. Uh, so hopefully we'll be back next week. Next week should be interesting. I think if our guest is here, we will also have uh, our friend Travis on. Yeah. Travis Wyman will be joining us because he'll have a lot of really cool questions for our guests for what they keep and reproduce. You'll see. Uh, Jeff, if you already have a spare Miss King, you need a chameleon. I mean, that's... And if you run a splitter, you can get multiple. Like we have our skinks on set up on the Miss King also. Yeah, I gotta tell anybody. I know we said it and we're gonna log off, but it, you know, whatever. Get a Miss King. I really want to get another Miss King for my snake room. I really want to plumb 
spray nozzles into all of my cages. Uh, even if my bow is, I mean, I spray them down here and there, but it might be cool to run a little bit of mister in the morning, a little bit at night. Um, so I think I may invest. Could see a big improvement in a lot of things. Yeah, I think I may actually invest in another Miss King for my snake room because my snake room and this room Sounds are like two you totally need to different sell rooms. Another baby. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know this this Miss King I have actually could do that. I bought a pretty good sized Miss King. It could run several cages, but it's just it's on the other side of the house. Yeah. So it's it's not going to work. So Darren, get you a chameleon. You know, get up to three reptiles. Come on, man. You got to pump those numbers up. <laughs> this one will have legs. You know, your wife will love it. Say, I was gonna say, I, I'm willing to bet that your your wife would truly enjoy this one. This one would be cute because they're they're so much fun to just watch. Yeah, I don't think I would do it like right at night. I, th I think I have good ventilation, but I think I would probably do it while lights are still. On. I don't know. The heat's always on; it kind of dries it out some too at night. I just like would like that. You know, you kind of get that that evening dew outside. Kind of thing. I come. I wonder how that would work. I don't. I wouldn't run it a ton. Like we we kind of soak it down for the chameleon. And but it air it's a whole screen cage, I think dries out pretty quick. Um, but I wonder how my boas would do, you know. But I mean, even the glass cage with the skinks, they dries out pretty quick, it too. dries out pretty quick. So, but yeah, I, I think I might have to do that. So, everybody, uh, <laughs> I agree with the man of chameleons are the easiest to convince. What just tell her it's pretty, and it didn't take me long to talk this guy into it either. It you didn't talk me into it, they did. I mean, it's a joint effort. They convinced me. It's a joint effort. Um, because I was again, I was and very Amanda anti. is your friend on getting you this alligator. So There's, she wants an alligator, and I'm trying to help her. But my <laughs> alligator, I can't get. Hers would be much easier to get than mine. I think. Um, but you gotta get her pied alligator. That's right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, go get everybody. Go get, go buy a chameleon. Everyone get a chameleon. They're a great pet. They're I'm telling you, they're so much easier to take care of than I thought they were. And yawning over here. Look, you gotta make my hot dog. I know. We gotta go. <laughs> all right. We'll see all of y'all next week. Uh, go tell us your favorite Girl Scout cookie over on the Facebook page. And good night. Bye. All right. Everybody can still see us. We're leaving.